Good evening. Welcome to the Planning Board meeting of uh, January 14th, 2019. Holy smokes. Um, and I will entertain a motion to reopen the continued public or open the continued public hearing for 52 and 55 Wilson Street stormwater management permit application and earth removal permit application. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Please come forward. Thanks for your patience. Um, I, do we have we don't really have an update I don't believe or do we have any anything I don't think there was any yeah. we kind of ran yeah. out of time yeah. I think is what happened okay I'm just getting to the um, did you receive the DP, DP, uh, correct the Department of Public Utilities did issue an order regarding um, the zoning exemption for the city. Aaron Rogers is the answer here. <sighs> Sorry. Yeah, what was the date of the DPU decision? December 20th. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, looking at the agenda, we can talk about the DP decision. Um, uh, let's see. Um, but looking at the detailed agenda for the discussion, um, the next item would be discuss stormwater management and earth removal criteria and plan revisions to be made, if any. Did anybody have any revisions to make or suggest? Um, so just to, just to reiterate that not much land is going to be removed. It's Yeah, I mean, we, we had provided um, the board with kind of the, the worst case scenario. So we've been looking at cut and fill analyses, and there's actually more fill coming onto the site, but there's some material, as we, for those who are on the site walk, there's a lot of rock out there, and some of that material might need to be moved off site. So that would be the worst case scenario, but we are trying to find locations on site and reuse as much of that material as possible. Thank you. Um, it, there is not um, uh, an agenda item to discuss the DPU decision, but did anybody have um, anything that they wanted to bring forward from that? Uh, I'm really happy that we're getting fire training from, from this arrangement. It's very important for your facility as well as for the town and the safety of our fire staff, so I'm very pleased with that. Thank you. Anybody else? Um, for, for the public's um, information, that decision is available to be um, to be read on our on our site, and I'm sure on the town page. I guess I, I have one more. I have yeah. um, a, a question. Um, they have the um, the activity hours at 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Was that what we had discussed as being the time the hours we were okay with? Because those are the school hours. The seven, the seven p.m., the seven a.m. Um, Are those typical construction hours? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we tried to mod uh, <clears throat> Excuse me. Tried to maintain the existing town bylaws. Uh, what was stated in there? Yeah, I think we were a little concerned with the truck traffic in the center of town, with, uh, operating at the same time as the buses, and I think we had tried to move it back to nine, nine a.m. And then, um, again, um, to sort of abbreviate during the school let out hours between 2.30 and 4, um, I think were, were our concerns. Um, and I'm not sure how you would word that. Um, so there's needs, I'm not sure how other people feel about that. I just, um, I'm just concerned that, you know, that there are moving trucks and they're pretty large. and could create um, issues with bus pickup and you know along Main Street um, to the highway. Yeah, I think um, we reviewed actually last Wednesday the traffic management plan with both the police and fire chief. Mm -hmm. um, within that, we have kind of a, not a histogram, but kind of outlines kind of 
expected truck truck traffic and volumes throughout the period of the day, um, assuming the school hours and um, um, the time of the year, I guess. Um, we try to spread a lot of that out, so there's kind of around the 7 a.m. time period. It's it's mostly folks that are commuting to the job site. Um, not to say there wouldn't be a potential, I guess, for truck traffic since we don't really stipulate that, but we certainly would. We do identify in there the bus routes that the trucks would, or that the traffic could potentially encounter on the way from 495 to the site. So we would certainly try to steer away from. There that are as also much walkers that walk to school too. I'm just wondering if we could have that line item number two <coughs> developed a little bit better. Um, maybe um, <coughs> we had discussed it with the police and you identified um, the ebbs and the tides of the flow of traffic. If, if you could maybe illustrate it in, in, in a paragraph or a couple sentences, um, clarify it a little better for us. Is, it, is this on the draft conditions number two, Deb? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, just, just as a question of clarification I guess we're talking about earth removal activity which isn't just I was just gonna say I'm looking at, I'm looking there's, at the water there's stuff that would happens on the site on site um, yeah that's true and I think okay. well my personal opinion is that the the applicant will modify their truck schedules to what works best for them well that's that's what I want to um, if they could manage to do their operations uh, that are on site at those hours that are mostly likely bus traffic hours. Um, I think if we could somehow have some kind of identification that you will do that in that draft condition, um, for me it would be appreciated. I have a Is, does it mention the traffic management plan in the conditions or in the bylaw? In the DPU decision, it has a traffic management plan that is already in existence, right? If I That's remember correct. that correctly. And you worked with the Hopkins and Fire and Police to put that and together. schools. We we extended an invite to the schools. I don't think we, well, we didn't have anyone from the school department participate. However, Chief Slammon and Chief Lee had felt that they could probably best participate in the review and then provide their commentary, I guess, back to the school department. Okay. Um, we certainly could extend a, another review meeting, I think, with the, with the school department, whether or not they would accept that, certainly. Um, and we certainly are very cognizant and aware of the schools, particularly, and, and folks, uh, children waiting out at the, the bus stop. Um, and we do cover that with our construction crews, whether it's for this project or other work, and, and even just the, the plant personnel every you know September and then we try to reinforce it throughout the year um, so we're, we're definitely aware of that um, I think we'd struggle a little bit to completely eliminate all traffic between 7 and, and 9 a.m. Um, for the project but well I don't mean for the project I mean truck traffic heavy truck traffic that could be uncontrolled should a small child you know I mean in extreme situations I, I, I just like so, some kind of clarification in so that Deb, I just want to interject I think that um, for this we have to to focus on you know these two um, applications right okay. so it's, it is just the project for us okay for the for the truck traffic um, if do I remember correctly that the uh, the TMP makes you split up routes so all the traffic is not expected to go up Wilson Street is that um, right yeah we will ha have likely very little traffic Cedar actually. and, and um, the old Rafferty Road now yeah so it was a topic of I guess of the, the meeting last Wednesday but most traffic would travel from 495 up 135 to the intersection with um, 85 and then head down towards the old Rafferty Road Legacy Farms North and then uh, would come up Legacy Farm North and then enter the facility off of either that or the Wilson Street um, roadway or access way. Um, I know there was talk of like the water main project that perhaps may take place this spring or summer so we we would look to work with the police department and fire department to maybe alter some of that access during that time frame although it sounded like a lot of that work might be at evenings. Um, so, so throughout the project, we'd be notifying the, 
fire department on a I think it's a weekly or bi-weekly basis um, as to the kind of forward-looking one week ahead um, and depending on I guess what items may be taking place in town we'd kind of make changes to our our plan to, to try to accommodate some of that so I, I'm not sure if that necessarily addresses uh, your concern no but. it doesn't <laughs> um, I just I, I would like some clarification in, in in within the school hours of busing hours um, just just what if you discussed it that's great I just would like it clarified here in our draft conditions um, in a sentence you know Thanks. perhaps or do you have a suggestion of how to word it I have I have a suggestion um, so basically it says right now this is the earth removal activity item 2 earth removal shall occur only between the hours of 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. on Saturday and I would suggest um, adding comma with traffic on public roadways limited during the um, school opening school what, what would you call it school what commuting hours commuting hours so, so specific yeah. that during school commuting hours. so you've already commuting. stated that you you do limit that and so this is just saying could we add in conjunction with the communication that they'll have with the fire and the police because I think that's the most important yeah rather than I, limiting yeah. specific <clears throat> hours just that they're in contact with the fire and police to make sure it's safe okay so with traffic on public roadways limited in accordance with uh, you you're guidance from the police from the police and from fire department for the traffic management plan I don't know I think school I think I liked um, the school, <coughs> school commuting commuting hours in conjunction with the police and fire okay. department uh, you know monitored traffic on public roadways limited during school commuting hours in accordance with I don't know how long we can make this sentence. Uh, in accordance in the traffic management plan. I'm just leave in accordance with the traffic management plan. Is that what you just said? Yeah. Yeah. So the traffic management plan, just for clarity for us and for the public, includes this ongoing conversation with police and fire. Is that correct? How what how is how does that ongoing the ongoing communication was stipulated as uh, or. I guess was suggested by the company as part of the DPU proceeding so that became uh, I won't say a condition but it became something that we committed to during the proceeding so the ongoing communication with the with the with the fire department specifically um, that became part of the state's docket okay the traffic management plan again was included in the docket and the conversations that we had with the state and, and, the, and the town and then that was formalized in the order or the condition the order from the state right. so so that very specifically the traffic management plan had to be developed and we had that and that's that's really for plant operations that it's not for these two no that's for construction for oh it specific is okay. construction okay yes okay would it be reasonable to add to the condition that the traffic management plan should be completed and in place prior to the beginning of construction yes how about that that's good how about that does that work for <coughs> folks all right so are you going to add that to number two or are you going to make a separate condition yeah, number two okay does that does that work Deb um, so that's the only sentence so it wouldn't it, no it's no, just following two. yeah that's great yep And that's fine yes. and just recognize that um, your conditions um, apply only to the earth removal portion of construction and not to any other part of construction because we're doing it on the earth removal just permit the earth, earth removal. yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. which is all we can do we, we'd certainly apply that throughout the project in any ways okay that's consistent with what we had committed to with the state so I'm just thinking for enforcement purposes yeah no I appreciate it yeah um, okay does anybody have any other additions um, or suggestions for either of the draft conditions the earth removal or the stormwater 
Um, and here's when I t share with you that because of my technological deficiencies, I can't go back and forth from the, the, the outline to the draft conditions. So um, I don't think that we really have any open items on the outlines. Somebody could correct me if I'm uh, It's um, item eight, discuss stormwater management, earth removal criteria, and plan revisions be made, if any, which I right. think we cro crossed right. off. And discuss conditions of approval with applicant, which Okay, That's which what we're doing. doing. Perfect. And then close the public hearings. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, so any, anybody have anything else to add before we um, bring this thing in for a landing? All right. So usually we vote the decision before we close the public hearing. So um, let me just read for the benefit of the public and the applicant and all of us. Not word for word, mind you. But in general, the uh, draft conditions for the stormwater management permit at 52 and 55 Wilson Street. All erosion and sediment control shall comply with the following performance criteria, and there, there are several listed, and they are standard conditions. There's nothing um, added that's new, is there, Elaine? I didn't think so. And again, it's that technology thing for Mrs. Kramer. Mm -hmm. Shh. Okay. <laughs> you can help me. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, if I press this, yeah. Yeah. You can jump more easily from document to document. Yeah. I'm going to take a course from. Oh, look at that. Yes. There's your outline. Um, there's your document. <laughs> All right. Coming into this century. All right. I'm sorry. The project uh, number two. The project shall comply with the following erosion and sediment control requirements. These are all standard as well. Uh, so I, in, prior to any land disturbance activities commencing on site, the developer shall mark limits of land of no disturbance, et cetera. Um, appropriate erosion and sediment control measures shall be installed prior to soil disturbance. Sediment shall be removed once the volume reaches, wow, a certain measure, <laughs> one quarter to one half inch height of the hay bale. Um, sediment from sediment traps or sedimentation ponds shall be remo removed when design capacity has been reduced by 50%. Soil stockpiles must be stabilized or covered at the end of each workday. Disturbed areas remaining idle for more than 14 days shall be stabilized with seeding, wood chips, bark mulch, etc. Disturbed areas remaining idle for more than 14 days shall be stabilized with seating, etc. For active construction areas such as borrow or stockpile areas, roadway improvements in areas within 50 feet of a building under construction, a perimeter sediment control system shall be installed. A tracking pad or other approved stabilization method shall be constructed at all entrance exit points of the site. Permanent seating shall be undertaken in the spring from March through May and in late summer and early fall from August through, uh, August through October 15th. All slopes steeper than three to one, as well as permanent dikes, sediment basins, or traps and embankments must, upon completion, be immediately stabilized with sod, seed, and anchored straw mulch or other stabilization measures. Temporary sediment trapping devices must not be removed until permanent stabilization is established in all contributor, contributory dam drainage areas. All temporary erosion and sediment control measures shall be removed after final site stabilization. A minimum of seven days prior to the start of construction, a detailed construction sequence shall be submitted to the principal planner by the site contractor for review and approval. A copy of the signed stormwater pollution prevention plan shall be provided to the board prior to construction. All required SWPPP, stormwater pollution prevention plan, um, Stormwater construction site inspection report shall be submitted to the principal planner within 14 days of each inspection. An adequate stockpile of erosion control materials shall be on site at all times. The disturbed area shall be temporarily stabilized by hydro seeding if construction of the replacement LNG facility is not commenced within 30 days of lot clearing. Initial excavation of the proposed stormwater infiltration basin that is to be used as temporary sediment base as a temporary sediment basin during construction shall be limited to 6 to 12 inches above finish grade. And construction shall not commence until all required permits and approvals have been obtained. Upon permit approval, a <coughs> weather stormwater grab sample shall be collected once per year for three years. And there's more detail on that. Oh, 
and that's the last one. Sorry. So, um, does anybody have any conditions to suggest to add to those? I'll entertain a motion uh, to approve the stormwater permit with the following, those conditions. So, we just add that you would also find that the project meets the standards in section point zero seven zero of the regulations. Seven. I'm sorry, 7.0? So, so those are the standards that Beta has used in going through and has indicated that they meet all of the, the standards. So for point of order, would that be the second uh, scenario that you've listed? Yes. Okay. I'm Does that sorry. have to be read out? Where am I? I think you pretty much have done that. But yes, so you're uh, approving the, the application um, by finding that the project meets the standards and adequately protects water resources that set forth in the bylaw and the regulations with the conditions that you've listed. Perfect. I love the way you said that. We'll add that to the motion. Um, is there, a, is, was it moved? So moved. Seconded? Second. Any discussion? Uh, all of those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. I really am going to have to take a computer course before I do this job again. All right. Thanks for your patience, everybody. There's a lot of information in front of us. <laughs> I know. You're desperate to help me. You could slide right over and help me. Right? Yeah, okay. yeah, I'm on it now. Yep. Um, okay, so for the earth removal permit, um, where are where do I find the, the conditions of the regs? The conditions of the regulations? So you findings have to say right here. But I'm on the draft conditions, yep. Yeah. And the findings are the bottom of my memo page, too. Oh, thank you. I just needed to know where I was looking for. All righty. So... I am learning real time in front of you. It's a little embarrassing, but look at me go. All right. So the findings that we should. Um, oh, when there's a waiver request, we should deal with as well. There we go. All right. So um, uh, the fi the findings need the proposed earth removal conforms to the purpose of the chapter, which is chapter 96 of the general bylaws, section 36.6. Um, so removal conforms to the purpose of the chapter. The earth removal operation on the permitted lot will not be injurious or dangerous to the public health or safety, produce noise, dust, or other effects detrimental to the normal use of adjacent the adjacent property, have material adverse effects on the health safety of persons living in the neighborhood or on the other or on the use or amenities of adjacent land. The earth removal activity, activity will not result in traffic conditions on roads in the area of the earth removal activity, which will cause unsafe and dangerous conditions. The regulations contained in this chapter shall will be complied with. The bylaw states that the board may impose permit conditions. Yep, okay. Those are, those are the findings that we need to find. And there is a specifically a waiver request. The applicant has requested a waiver from Section 96-3H, which requires that a 100-foot buffer strip of undisturbed land be maintained at all boundaries of the lot and street lines. The applicant has stated that the buffer is less than 100 feet in various areas of the site. A formal vote granting a waiver from Section 96.3H is required. Um, before we do the conditions, I would say, I would say yes. Okay. All right. So um, just for the public's uh, information, the, um, the, the buffer that it's imposing on is all um, state-owned land, state land or undisturbed land? Is it's, it's, it's DCR land DCR to, the, to land. the rear of the property <clears throat> and also Wilson Street. So we're within previously disturbed areas up near Wilson Street. So um, would anybody like to make a motion on granting the waiver request? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion. Lots of, lots of seconds. Okay. And a discussion, yes. Uh, and just for clarification for people watching at home or here, uh, there's also security aspects of the fencing and distance from the street 
and DCR land and Wilson Street and um, North, the new name of the street there. Property, so, but, yeah. like so it's pretty disturbed, and, it, yeah. and there's no new disturbances other than what you're being constructed for the gate. No, no further disturbance. Well, is it the rate? Yeah. The, right. So it, if <coughs> well, yeah, I, I, might, I might reiterate your question back. Um, so we're not. You're, you're right. There's security fencing. That has all been identified, right, and right. that is identified on the plan too. And the and on the rear of the property, we are within 75 feet of the. Or there's 75 feet of undisturbed. Which is near land, the DCR. Land. Which is near the DCR. Land. I apologize. That, just one second. I do have to take a motion to open and uh, continue after the discussion concludes on this public hearing the Elmwood Farms three subdivision discussion so moved Second. all those in favor aye, aye. aye. Okay. sorry go and that includes the security fencing and anything around it so that doesn't the security fencing doesn't go beyond that 75 feet thank you any other questions or feedback or okay um, I think we're ready for a vote on the waiver. All those in favor of granting the waiver signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. So then um, just specifically, we do find that um, granting of the permit is in keeping with the Chapter 96 of the General Bylaws, Section 96.6, um, the conditions that I just read. Is that correct? Does anybody have any feedback on that? Okay. So then the conditions, here we go. Look at me go, Amy. Back to the conditions. Oh, it's um, okay, so <laughs> draft conditions for um, 52 and 55 Wilson Street, the earth removal permit. The duration of the permit shall be for 24 months, which will start on the date that the earth removal activity commences. The earth removal activity shall occur only between the hours of 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Saturday. And then this, the additional sentence is? With traffic on public roadways limited during the school commuting hours in accordance with the traffic <coughs> management plan. The traffic management plan <coughs> shall be completed and in place prior to the commencement of construction. Perfect. Um, the permit is not assignable. The applicant shall post a bond or make a deposit with the town in the amount of $10,000 to guarantee the conformity with the provisions or conditions of the, of the permit. The, there's just a typo there on, yeah, there's an extra <laughs> on underneath the fourth one, between four and five. The applicant shall submit a, phot a photographic survey of Wilson Street and Legacy Farms Road, Old Rafferty Road, in the vicinity of the project prior to and upon completion of the earthwork activity. In the event that any of the permit conditions are not faithfully observed and performed, the board shall have the authority to revoke the permit at any time in accordance with the provisions of the earth removal bylaw. Earth removal activities shall not commence until all required permits and approvals have been obtained. And I think that's it. Yes. Yes. So I'll entertain a motion on uh, the, the permit, the special permit for the um, earth removal. So moved. Second. To approve this, the special permit for the earth Move removal. Moved to. So moved. And second. All right. Any discussion? I have a question on five. Yes. Did we, did we not discuss um, some sort of um, remedy if the road was not in a usable condition or that if there was serious damage done to the road because of these activities? I mean, we've gotten the condition that we're going to look at it before and after, but was there not discussion on some sort of remedy if there was an issue? I don't recall that there was. The $10,000 is for conforming um, I, I'm assuming to the conditions, right? But the conditions don't state specific. If you look at number remedy. four, the town may use the bond or deposit in the event that the applicant does not comply with all the terms and conditions and complete all restoration in a manner satisfactory to the board in accordance with the permit. Significant public safety hazards exist, which will not be addressed by the applicant 
or material environmental damage has resulted from the earth removal activity and remediation will not be addressed by the applicant in a matter satisfactory to the board. So um, does that cover what? the roadway by saying public safety hazards? Do you, do you think 10,000 dollars is enough? So I don't know that it specifically covers the roadway. I think it's no. better to, um, to delineate that, but I don't know, yeah. And if it is the roadway, I'm not sure $10,000 um, is adequate, but I don't know. Uh, uh, I wanted to uh, add to the, um, the legacy farms trucks use that road a lot too. They're also very heavy, so it would be a little, it's going to be very difficult to determine exactly whose <coughs> trucks caused the problem. So I don't know how, I don't know how we address that. In the I'm not sure either. Um, but that's not the thing that's in front of us. Okay. This is the one that's in front of us. I thought we were addressing it by the photographs of the, of the street. So I, we're, although we're, there could be other people using a, the street, sure. But it's a great it's a great question. So I don't. I, does the board want to you know entertain some some remedy? Uh, uh, well, Carol, can I'm just looking to Elaine for a suggestion. You could add a sentence that says that the applicant shall be responsible for repairing any damage to the roadway. So moved. And or, you were going to say that? Or we could increase the bond amount to repair the roadway should it be damaged. So I, I'm, I'm a little more in favor of Elaine's word, this is me personally, um, rather than trying to estimate a, an amount. Plus, I don't think we want to take it on if yeah, it's true. preferable to have someone else yes. do the repairs. Then. Okay, true. Right. All right. So what was the wording, Elaine? I think um, something like the applicant shall be responsible for repairing any damage to the roadway. Okay. So we're going to add that on to number five. Caused by. Can, can, that's a friendly amendment? I, I don't think it's an amendment. I think it's just we're still. Okay. I don't think we have to amend, do we? We're still in discussion. We're still just on. discussing what it might say. But thank you, Dave. Sure. Oh, Whatever you need, I'm here. Yeah. Did you have something? Yeah. Else? Could, is there a way to clarify it so that it's damage caused the roadway by the, by the project? And I know maybe that becomes complicated because, again, Legacy Farms North. I, 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 I mean, I, it's totally fair, and I think that that's... Um, I expect the burden would probably be on us to show that it wasn't us. Um, Say damage I think we've recognized caused by the project, and then yeah, yeah. I, I definitely think that that's a fair clarification. Okay, um, it's still gonna it's still gonna be challenging if that if that is what happens. <laughs> How about this? The honor system. If you wreck it, you fix it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, it'll be. Um, I understand that it'll be difficult, but I think it's important to have some uh, specific uh, wording in there. Thanks, Carol. Anything else? No. All right. Um, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, perfect. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. <laughs> oh, and I will entertain a motion to close the hearing. <laughs> <laughs> Just leave it open forever. I have the rest of the year booked every other week. So. All those in favor of closing the hearing? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? And I realized that the next thing wasn't a public hearing, but I opened one as if it was anyway. But, um, Elmwood Farms 3 subdivision is just a discussion. Thanks for your patience, everybody. So, um... We do have a continued public hearing at 745, so I'm going to interrupt and do what I did the last time and just move it to the, to the end, but please do go ahead and introduce yourself and start. I'm sorry, I'm a, I'm a little hot of hearing. That's okay. So we have a, a continued public hearing at 745. Procedurally, I'll have to interrupt you and open that and continue it until the conclusion of the discussion. So just in a couple of minutes, I'm going to interrupt you briefly. Sure. That's all. At 7.45, you can just vote to continue that to February. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 stay here. Do we have a date in February? Oh, I missed that. I missed that. She's just going to open and continue the hearing. All right, yep. Go ahead. 
So just in a couple minutes, we'll do that. Go ahead. <laughs> um, my name's Alan Greenwald. I'm the trustee of Abbott Realty Trust. I'm also an attorney in, in Milford. Uh, and um, although the, the engineer is going to do the bulk of the talking, I just want to give you a little bit of the background because uh, what we're <coughs> talking about preliminarily here is a modification of a 30-year-old subdivision. Um, uh, this was, the subdivision was approved in 1989, almost 30 years ago. And the issues during the 30-year the period have been uh, town storage. Um, uh, back in the 90s, we had uh, multiple, multiple, multiple meetings with the, uh, with the then Water and Sewer Board, and we were able to get, in the early 90s, some sewer permits, in the late 90s, other sewer permits, and, um, uh, and put in 35 houses into the subdivision, all at Blueberry Lane. Um, and have not been able to get sewer for the remaining 24 years, for the last 20 years. And uh, at some point, the wetlands regulations changed. And uh, and as a result in the, of the new definitions of wetlands, some of our land, which was not previously wetlands, became wetlands. And uh, as a result, uh, we've lost eight of the 24 lots. Um, oh, starting maybe four or five years ago, and we've made various attempts, we, we had meetings with, the, with uh, DPW and various other town departments and boards um, trying to find a global solution that would work for the town and work for us and uh, and during the course of that at the recommendation of the head of the department of public works we um, uh, had or the engineers went and uh, and retested the land i'm going to actually this is the moment when i interrupt you for momentarily i'm sorry I'll entertain a motion to um, open and continue the public hearing for the Mass Monarch Woods West Elm Street to February 25th at 7.30, unless we change it. 8.30 How about 8.30? How about 8.30? So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, thank you. I'm sorry for the interruption. Thank you. Um, uh, we we had these meetings, um, uh, did all the retesting, the recommendation of, of the department. The testing again indicated that uh, that we that ordinary systems would not work, and we would need town sewer. Um, we also <coughs> discussed various things that we would be doing uh, for the for the town. Uh, and much to our surprise, we ultimately got a letter from the head of the Department of Public Works turning us down. Uh, at that point, we had no choice, but we instituted a, a lawsuit. And so then- what, Tell me the year on that. What's that? The year, when was that? What uh, year? Uh, last year. Last year, okay. Yep. And, um, and during the uh, course of it, and we hadn't gotten very far, the town council got in touch with our attorneys, I'm not handling the litigation, um, and recommended that they think that they that there's a way of working this out, and uh, recommending that uh, the case be continued to give the parties an opportunity to work things out. Among other things, they indicated that that they were doing something within the framework of 
of their rules and regulations, how they go about it so that they think they can work out the, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the town sewer part for us. Uh, and um, and uh, subsequent to that, we had a meeting with various of the town uh, officials, and we're attempting to work out a, 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 uh, a resolution of everything. And among the things that have to be resolved um, is, is a couple of issues, which, uh, which are planning board issues, and, and on an informal basis, we, uh, we ask to appear before you so that we can discuss those issues. What essentially has happened, as will be explained by the engineer, um, the middle of our property was pulled out so that we, it had been set up, these 24 lots had been set up on three roads. Uh, one of those roads has disappeared, the other one uh, has been cut, uh, it, 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 the, the, the connection has been cut off so that as a result of the new wetlands regulations, we now have eight lots on each of two lots, uh, on each of two roads, uh, all of which, and each of the roads have about a cul-de-sac at about a thousand feet. And, uh, and one of the things which we need to discuss with you is the possibility of a, of a waiver in, uh, it, with, with the modified plan that we want to submit, which is essentially the same plan as we had before, but with with, with, with lots, the roads are the same, except for the, the extent that they've disappeared. Uh, and uh, and the, uh, uh, and so, so that what we're dealing with is a situation whereby, uh, whereby uh, the approved subdivision plan uh, needs, uh, needs the, this, 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 this kind of, uh, uh, of, uh, of, of attention in order to be able to permit us to build uh, even the 16 lots which are which are left uh, there are also uh, there are also an issue the other issue that we want to discuss is a drainage issue uh, the drainage uh, plan had been prepared uh, initially to cover the entire subdivision which in, which includes the eight lots that we've lost uh, uh, there have been some changes in the regs and uh, uh, and the existing drainage which is in uh, uh, we believe should take care of it was planned for all of the lots but we do want to also <coughs> discuss those things so that uh, so that I'll, I'll turn it over to the engineer to to more precisely describe what what it is that we're looking to do thank you thank for, you thank you for the record Rob Truax of GLM engineering I had sent some plans in today for a and we were able to pass those out they have these mm -hmm. To give you the overview, just to have the them. presses here. Well, I thought it would just make it easier to put them on the board. And just so you know, it's also up here. So if you see me looking above you, it's not that I'm not listening to you. I'm actually you're not, you're not staring off into space. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> For clarification. So this is the proposed layout that you see up there right now. This is what's coming from the original subdivision, and you can see the. Uh, the underlying roadways and lot lines for the old subdivision. And basically, the two roads, Royal Avenue, follows the exact same path as the original subdivision, and all the lots to the left are the exact same lots. The ones to the right are similar up until you get to the last two, they've been modified a little. And you can see that Fitch Road now, which comes in, or Fitch Avenue, which comes in off the as well, no longer connects over to Royal Avenue and that ends in a cul-de-sac. And if you look in there with the area's hats, that's what we're calling the open space parcel, which would be the open space land that we could need to the town. And most of that primarily is wetlands as a result of the recent flagging that was done by our office in the last couple of years. So that area is now considered wetlands. Um, it would be difficult to run a road through there, obviously. You'd have to extend, you'd have to go over the 5,000 square feet of filling to be able to the project status. And go through a lot of hoops, and I don't think it would be appreciated by the Conservation Commission at this point in time. Also, on the proposed layout now, that there's a small triangular piece over behind, I think what's called, I can't read the eye plan. It's on our top of Fitch Ave to the back there, you see it hatched out. There's a small triangular piece right there. 
and that comes down with a 20 foot strip that connects the Fitch Ave for a walking path, a future walking path. And I believe this town land behind that. And, and that had to do with prior discussions we had with the town because they own that land and, uh, they, and they asked us to give, a, give them that piece of land so that they could, could have a, either a walking path or a walking path or maybe a bike path. So that, so that, that was cut out to give Which to the What is the well town on the it's land back there? It's the AMC Park in the middle. The AMC Park, okay. And the new school. So that would give a connection out to Fitch Ave with a 20 foot strip off of that open space piece. Okay. So the Fitch Ave Road is approximately 900 feet in length to the end of that post cul de sac. The Myrtle Ave Road is a huh, is 1,200 feet to the end, right at the property line, where it has a temporary turnaround show. So we'd be looking for waivers on the dead ends, obviously, for the modification. We'd also be looking for consideration about not redesigning the drainage system that's already been designed and approved and built from the previous subdivision. The detention basins and all that were constructed, built as part of a whole subdivision that was approved back in. 30 years ago. Right, in the 1990s. So with this, the last phase of this was built in like 98, 99. So we're talking 20 years since they've been out there. So, and we could make some improvements to that, obviously, if the board so desired. But other than that, so the project goes from a 24 lot subdivision to 16. And, you know, the lots, some of them on, especially on the Fitch Ave side, they've been slightly reconfigured. You can see the old lines underneath. If you went back to the old subdivision, we've just been blacked out. But you can see some of that's just been reconfigured in the, in the shape to accommodate the, the, the lots and as well as the open space portion. And there was a, a little stub road that went off in that direction as well that's now been eliminated. <coughs> so we're really just looking for input on the board where we will go in the future. You know, we obviously have to go through conservation as well for this approval. If the Maria Ave, the Myrtle Ave side, sorry, I don't know, uh, there will be some wetland filling, as you can see, it extends up into the road that's a hatched out area, where that wetland extends up into the proposed roadway. So we'll be in front of them as well for to do the wetland filling as well as working in the buffer zones. So this will go back before them for more conditions. So we're just looking for input from the board, the guidance. You know, we're going to come back in at some point with this modification of the formal submittal and just what the pleasure of the board is here, how we approach it, and what things you'd be looking for from us. Okay. Through the chair? Yes. Anxious. <laughs> Desperate. Go. Anxious. You say tomato, I say tomato. <laughs> Uh, just a quick question. I mean, I don't have any of the history on this, but the, the roads that are sh the original plan that were shooting off the back there, was that before the town bought the Terry property and put the school in? Did they, somebody envisioned those coming out to 85? I didn't work on it back then. I, I don't know the history that much. Well, the EMC Park would have still been there, right? Right. I don't know how long the town's on. Okay, thanks. Just curious. Totally not 90s, but totally not the 80s. Thank you. I think I had five kids when EMC went in. I think I was there. <laughs> I have a similar question uh, about Myrtle Street. It, in both instances, it's a dead end. Is what you were? Is it partly built now? Not really built. Is this a curb cut? Blue, 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 blue Bay Lane is all. Blue Bay is all. Blue Bay is a curb cut on Myrtle. Public road right now. The stuff, all the drainage, the sewer, the water stubs, everything's in place going into the subdivision. The roundings were there, and that's it. But are there curb cuts currently? Uh, no. I can't recall. I haven't been out there for a while. I have to the audience is shaking uh, their head no. So we're gonna he doesn't recall. Yeah, he built the house and he doesn't recall. No, so I don't know. They're not. So in a newer plan, it shows like half of a roundabout. Is that on the end of Myrtle Street? Is that accurate or am I reading that wrong? That's actually on the original plan, too. <coughs> It's like a cul-de-sac kind of thing. This little oh, semicircle. Yeah. yeah. That was on the original plan, yeah. Hmm. So would that be a sorry, would it's that be a cul de sac there. going forward? Yeah. I was gonna say it's still on it's That's still on. it was the same layout. We haven't changed that. Okay. okay. You absolutely can, Amy. Um, I was gonna ask Elaine if she could remember. What is the maximum length for a cul de sac that we allow? 500. 500, 500 feet, but it still needs a waiver to have. Yeah, both, both of them, right? 500. So, I'm sorry. 
So 500 feet is the maximum, but it's still a waiver it's to do a dead end? It's still a dead end. It's not a by right situation. It's um, the board has to make a finding that there's exceptional circumstances. And, and this would be exceptional circumstances with <laughs> you, an applicant would have to make their case. Yeah, for for the for the dead end to start with, mm -hmm. and then also for the additional waiver. One of your one of your requests is is more than twice what the 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 maximum is, right? So that's a that's a heavy lift. I'm just from my mm -hmm. from my perspective, that's a heavy lift. Oh, it's twelve hundred. Can, can we the chair? Yeah. Um, I'd say I told you so, nanny, nanny, boo, boo, but don't said, do it. Just don't do it because no, I can. No, <laughs> you <laughs> no, really can't because that. exceptional circumstances. No, I'm saying we just we set a precedence with the last project that we did. Exceptional so, circumstances. And that's I'm not a fan of it, um, <laughs> but that kind of puts us in a predicament here. Um, okay, and um, just from my perspective. Uh, it would, uh, I would be um, not be in favor of waiving the new stormwater regs. I think that any new project, particularly a project that was designed 30 years ago, long before today's stormwater regs were envisioned, needs to be needs to be brought up to standard. That's that's just my opinion. I, I would agree. If, if these houses were built 30 years ago, there'd be so many problems with wet basements. Um, that's why these laws are important. Uh, I would suggest the Myrtle Street being a dead end <coughs> won't fly. Um, and I would suggest coming back with something that does fit our regulations uh, without having to ask for anything to be changed. Um, so work with what you have, and it's not going to be what you had in 1990. <coughs> what do you have in 2019? Then come back with, come back to us. 2089. To, to that. Okay. So you're, saying, you're, saying, you're suggesting that we design it with a 500 foot cover stance, if that's all we can work for. Whatever, whatever fits our bylaws in 2019, um, and come back with the best plan that, 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 that's best for the neighbors, best for the town, best for you, uh, without having to, uh, this Myrtle, Myrtle Avenue is not, is not in compliance with current standards. Uh, for instance, um, it would be better if you just look at it with fresh eyes and um, rework it because more. Uh. For, from, from my perspective, it's, it's the exceptional circumstances. Why, why you'd, you'd have to make your case. Okay. You'd have to make your case. Anybody else have particularly quick feedback or questions? Real quick, yeah. Comment, um, Mr. Duraso was saying possible shorter, or you mentioned possible shorter dead ends. But one other option is to possibly try to connect the two roads through the back, if possible. I understand right. that's a big because of the wetlands, but there is a smaller width of wetlands in the back of your property, right? So I'm just throwing options out there. How, what is the the delineation of the wetlands? Is that recent? Okay, and uh, what's the what's the like what's the net change? What what was the wetlands before? I don't think there was any shown. It's kind of a uh, forested wetland. It's not. Um, I don't know how I would describe it. Like if you walked it on a dry summer, if if you weren't familiar with wetlands, you might walk right through it and not know. Yeah, they're vernal vernal pools. Yeah, yeah, there's nothing there. So, so it's just sloping land, and it's a very high water table, poor soil, so it doesn't infiltrate well, so it just gets trapped there now, especially probably since the houses were built on blueberry, and they're built up, so the water's getting trapped behind the houses. So over the years, it's been a long time that water's been trapped in there, and it's just not infiltrated back in the ground. Um, <coughs> Hence the poor prep test that we couldn't do septic systems, and we need the sewer. Right. Oh, so blueberry is... Seward is not Correct. sewer. No, it is. It, it is, is sewer. sewer. It's all sewer. Okay. Everything else in the area is sewer except for this yep. piece. Everything else in the area, Ash Street, all is it Ash Street around Everything it? Everything within this subdivision that was built prior. In, uh, in the subdivision. Correct. Okay. If Susan Drive is not sewer. Yeah, okay. Um, I know that we have neighbors who might want to offer um, initial questions or comments, so it's a good time for public comment if anybody has anything they need to say. 
or would like to say you do just procedurally you do need to come forward introduce yourself give your address and you do need to be at the microphone so folks at home can hear you if you would like to make a contribution at this time Hi, I'm Sue Wheeler, and I live at 37 Blueberry. Um, we have some concerns because most of our yards are very wet on Blueberry, and pooling is significant, some much more than others. Our backyards are all wet. Um, in terms of wetlands, it is muddy even in the summertime in the back of the yards, a lot of them. Um, my question has to be now with the school back there, um, how does that affect this property, the flow of water, the septic, whatever it is? Um, things have changed in many of the yards where I've got a lot more water. Um, and I'm just curious now because in the original plants, the school was nowhere there. And so now there's a lot, of, a lot more um, a lot of people, a lot more construction has gone on back there, and most neighbors have seen a lot more water in their yards. Um, so I'm just curious if you know you have any thoughts on how the school has affected this plan, this piece of property. So that's the first. <coughs> we just have to look at that. We'll throw that forward. Do you have other things you want to make sure it? It's just a concern, too, with the flow of traffic and the current, um, just the traffic on the road and where this actually cuts through and, um, you know, starts and ends, basically. That's all. I have a question. Um, you're at 37 Blueberry, Ms. Wheeler. Uh, where on this, on this map would you be on the, uh, between Myrtle and Adams or? Uh, I am actually, um, I'm actually to the right, just to the right of where Fitch would be. Okay. So, lot, okay, next to where they'd be building on lot six. I can't even read it, to be honest. Yeah, it's really tiny type on everybody's okay. glasses. No, that's okay. Mm -hmm. I'm down here. Yep. All right. So, right, almost off, almost off the, the, bottom. the, the bottom. Yep. Yes. Okay. Yep. I'm off the bottom. Yeah. Oh, next to the contiguous project. Contiguous uh, yeah, project. I think I'm two down from that, but yes. right there, right around the corner there. Oh, I see. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Is there anybody else? <coughs> These are the headwaters of the Charles River. Mm. Uh, hi, my name is Jeremy Gelblax. I live at 19 Blueberry Lane. How are you? Yeah. Uh, my main concern is drainage. Uh, when I moved in in 2010, I immediately realized I bought a property that was very, very, very wet. Um, and if you drive on Blueberry Lane at any given time, there's pooling of water in front of probably 50% of the homes on the right side, which is the side I live on, um, which would be really concerning to me because we had to put a lot of money into just getting the drainage problem solved at my one property at, ni at number 19. And are you, are you on this map? I am. I, uh, I believe I'm um, like right here. 19. One or two over from None here. of us can see. Right that. next to the new wetland designation. So to the to the right of Adams right Street. Of Second over from Sorry. Adams. Second over. Yes. Long skinny lot. Yep. yep. Okay. I walk the property constantly, and it's wet 365 days a year. It's never dry. Um, now, obviously, I'm pretty close to the new wetland designation, so I'm not surprised. <laughs> um, but, I, but the properties, uh, I would say two or three uh, on both sides of me, and some of my neighbors are here, I know, are, are very wet as well. Um, we've had basement problems in the neighborhood, just, just a lot of drainage problems. So that would be my main concern, is how are you going to deal with the drainage? The properties... The land behind our properties is elevated, and the, the slopes and the grading of the original 1989 work was pretty bad, quite frankly. The grading all grades towards the back of all the homes, 
So that's why we get a lot more water than, than we probably should. Is it, it's higher, the land's higher behind us, and the grading uh, of the original work was, was not so great. So that would be my main concern, is uh, to make sure that we have some sort of uh, serious, serious look at the drainage, because the, the, it's, it's very wet. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. I have a, a question with regards to the memo. It says technically that because this is an improved subdivision, it could be built. How, how could it be built at this point with the change in the wetlands? So they could construct the plan. However, they would need probably an order of conditions from the <coughs> Conservation Commission. To the extent that they could get that or couldn't get it, it might prevent the building or some okay. of the building. With the original road design? Yes. So it is an approved plan and technically could be built. But I, I think it's good that we're here preliminarily so that we can uh, uh, look into it and see how, see, see how we can address that. Okay. All right. Um, well, I think you have our initial thoughts. I appreciate you that you came in. Okay. Anything else? I, I don't think so. Okay. Thank you very much. I'd like to add one more thing, though. Uh, there's a similar construction project on Stony Brook where it was approved in the 80s or 90s and is finally got under construction today. And uh, when they came to us, they had a look at everything again and they readjusted how they were working with the wetlands and the bridges and different situa situations that they have and they came out with a, a far better plan so um, I, I'm hoping you guys can too. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we have about five minutes. Can we uh, approve the minutes from 12-3-2018? Yes, I had one question. It's, um, I need to find it. It's on the last line of the minutes, I think. Um, I wasn't sure if it was a typo or if it was just my misunderstanding. Um, where is this? Okay. Um, this is revolutionary, Amy. in front of the zoning bylaw changes. I'm still, I'm still looking for it. <laughs> I'm just paging up. Okay, um, nope, still more zoning bylaws. Okay. Um, it is the last large paragraph um, so it's, we're on page 62 of the whole packet. Maybe it is time for additional charrettes. What is that? No, I, I just have mine individually, okay. so what, I don't know what. Oh, it's your page eight. Your, my page eight? Okay. Okay, so it's the, um, the second to the last line in the last big paragraph. Um, it's starting with services from a consultant. And maybe it is time for additional charrettes. I don't charrette. I don't know what that means. What does that mean? A charrette meetings. A, a group meeting seeking brainstorming. Brainstorming. Yeah. Charrette. I have never heard that term. A charrette is oh, a you have not been around. Long I have enough never heard that term. The legacy farms. That's when they started charretting. <laughs> <laughs> I think we shredded before. Hey, no, yeah. we shred. Shred is kind of a classic architectural term where everybody kind of throws all their ideas with with um, tracing paper or what we call bumwad um, <laughs> <laughs> over the plans and does sort of a mass scribble. Oh, um, okay. In public terms, it becomes more of a public meeting where people can throw their ideas down on, on a whiteboard in a more formal sense. So there's several different types of charrettes. Okay, so thank you. It's a lot of fun. Word of the I day. <laughs> In, and also in sort of uh, practical terms, it's an opportunity for the public to come in from representation from potentially often 
um, it, it's a sort of a structured gathering so that there are representations from all boards and committees, people who are, mm -hmm. who are on boards and committees in town, and then um, intentionally invites the public into the, uh, into the conversation for that brainstorming. Okay. I enjoy a good charrette, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of December 3rd. I, I have one modification as sure. well. Um, in on page seven um, where um, it begins, Ms. Feinberg stated she concerned about the size of the project and um, at the end of that sentence we had Mr. Um, his name is Mr. Old the architect, um, Mr. Oldenburg, um, had stated that, and it's on the plans, the percentage of the building that fills the lot is, is correct. So it's 35, it's um, the requirement, the town requirement is 35%, and it was met with a 25% solution. Would you like to write that to me in an email exactly? I will, I will. <laughs> I'll put it together in words. All right. Okay, so page seven? Yeah, page seven, a minor modification of a short sentence. <laughs> I move we approve the minutes pending, uh, including that change, addition, or amendment. As amended. As amended. As amended, second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? Because I left the room. Missed the discussion. I didn't Sorry. really miss any. Yeah. No, you, you, you missed them. Miss, <laughs> then I'm fine with what I heard. Okay. We were, <laughs> you missed them explaining to to me what a charrette is. Oh, I heard no, 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 no. Okay. Oh, so. this, you're looking for it. Without me looking for it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you came in on time. All right. I think we're almost at time, so I'm just going to. Uh, are we at time? We are at time. Um, I will entertain a motion to open the continued public hearing for 18 Cedar Street Off Street Parking Special Permit Application. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Come on up. Aye. Thank you. Yep. So I'm here at the moment. Big decision. Would I come? Wouldn't I come? Who would come? What I would say to the committee. But I come to get oh, any information I can and to let you know that. You already know that I was soundly defeated when I went to be before the board on Wednesday. Appeals. Was, hmm? The Board of Appeals, just for the public. The Board of Appeals, yes. So um, then I was kind of like, oh, what comes next kind of thing. And uh, the reason I was defeated is because they felt the building was too large and, um, and they, you know, so and didn't fit the, the streetscape. And so, you know, my vision had been that it was gonna be a handsome building that would really add something to Route 85. You know, it would be very nicely landscaped and look good. So after, you know, kind of uh, feeling bad for a while, I decided that uh, I needed to call um, Michael Rogan, because he kind of, he came to the meeting where this all happened, and it was the thing that when, when I heard Michael say how much he did not like my building, I, I really took that to heart, because I had heard a lot of concerns about parking, and you know, this and that and the other thing, but I, you know. So I met with Michael this morning, he was generous enough to meet with Carl, Oldenburg and, and myself. So, and it was very nice. And he's offered to work with, um, work with us. Um, and Carl and I then had another meeting. And um, our plan right now, preliminary, is that we are going to put together a couple of plans. One that suits our residential use. You know, we're a business-owned property, downtown business-owned property, and but. With a special permit, we could use it for multifamily residential. But I realize that everybody is very, um, the number is very big, the eight. And it was just a number that, it's, it's just, um, anyway. So, and I, so I realized that the whole town is kind of upset about this huge building that I'm building. Um, but, um, 
so, so we're going to go back to the drawing board and, and, um, and see what we can come up with. And, and then the alternative, of course, is, is to use it as a business zone property and figure out. And we also went over some ideas for how we could business zoning um, changes the use quite a lot. But I don't understand because sometimes you can read the zoning rules and you think you understand what you can do, but then it's not really, you know, there's something you've missed or people have other ideas. I don't know. Am I wrong, Elaine? I don't know. Huh? I don't know. We had a conversation a year ago about my plan, and, and I was told, okay, you've done this right, you've met all this, you've done this, you've done this, you know, so I'm flying along thinking I'm doing everything right, and then I find out I'm not. So anyway, um, I also, you know, I think you have in front of you the report, the, our response to the beta report, right? And so I was interested to know if you had any concerns about the beta, 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 beta report. Did you have any responses about the beta report for me? Um, did this come after the packet? Say it again. Did the, did the beta report come after the beta? Yes, we came mm -hmm. tonight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, I mean, did we answer the questions correctly? And, and, and was the report as I read it, they just had these questions for us and we addressed the questions and then uh, just wanted to know. Go ahead, Carol. I'll, I'll be honest with you. It, I did not have an opportunity to, to review it. It oh. came late. Uh, oh, okay. So I did not actually look at it. So I, okay. I apologize for that because I can't actually answer your question. Thank you. Okay, and I'm willing to take answers later if you don't have them tonight. Any, any thoughts that you have? So we rely very heavily on our beta engineering mm -hmm. consultants mm -hmm. um, to, to do all mm -hmm. the work that they are trained to do. Um, what? I'm sorry. She has the letter from Beta today. Oh. Oh, this is a new one. Oh, this okay. is this response to your response. Oh, it's a response to my response, which I have not read. Okay. So. All right. Okay. But, but just in general, I mean, we we take it, their information under advisement, but we weight it very heavily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There, there are engineers; they work for us, and, mm -hmm. and we uh, mm -hmm. we do so rely on them. Overall, what was their response to my response? We, none of us have had an opportunity oh, to read it. Nobody came today. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, well, it's a long response. So. Oh, but I'm not sure I even have that. Uh, um, what? It came in the email. That's an yeah. email not printed yeah. out. Okay. It's, yeah, we don't oh. have <laughs> Thank you. Beta is here. I apologize. Hello. Hi, Corrigan. How are you? Good, thanks. <laughs> I have January 11th beta, but that's a different So, uh, yeah, go ahead. Thank you. I'm sorry. Introduce yourself and, and carry us away. Um, I'm Jill Bokoff with Beta Group. Um, Phil Paradis and I wrote this letter. Um, so I believe this was sent out Friday afternoon maybe by Phil. Um, but we responded to the letter and mm -hmm. most of our issues have been resolved at this time. We had a few mm -hmm. major comments left. Um, Two of which are, we noticed the parking was revised slightly and there are now a total of 14 spaces and four of those are tandem. So that means there are only, um, you know, two of the units will not have a tandem space. So we were just looking for some mm -hmm. clarification on maybe how those would be numbered or assigned or how that would really work. Mm -hmm. um, and then one of the other comments is that the access drive to the parking lot is shown as 18 feet where 24 feet is required by, um, by law. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. And I want, yes, I'm, I know. We, um, yeah. yeah. Maybe you haven't even seen this one. I saw, oh, yeah. Just, yeah, so it's the, right here, the 18 dimension. Oh, okay, it should be 24. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, and then also, and, and also, um, the, the, S3 is a turning plan and confirmation from the fire department. Uh, yes, yeah, so we haven't seen anything from, you know, we saw the response that 
confirm or a conversation happened with the fire department we haven't seen anything in house as far as a training plan or a written response from the fire department that's typically what we like to review um, so we just made that comment that we haven't seen mm -hmm. it yet Thank you. Is there anything else? Was there anything else that you wanted to ask us about? Well, uh, let's see. Um, I wanted to say um, that uh, I'm withdrawing. <coughs> That's what I'm doing, right? I'm withdrawing my request. Well, I, I'm so confused about what happens. If I'm withdrawing now, so but, I'll, two but I'll be back. Okay. at some point perhaps <laughs> so uh, do you want people's general perceptions about yes. the, the uh, parking because that's what was in yes. front of us yes okay. that's what I want okay so I, I I'll start and then I'll let anybody else weigh in um, you know that conceptually uh, I applaud the innovative idea if it mm -hmm. can work mm -hmm. um, I think that given the location and the size of the lot um, the parking was uh, too obtrusive and it relied too heavily on relatively non-existent parking on adjacent streets um, even on a quiet Saturday morning um, there was there's there's no flexibility on those very little flexibility on the side streets um, so you know it struck me that it was it me personally just me mm -hmm. Um, that it was probably um, too uh, too aggressive for that lot, too much mm -hmm. to try and put on that lot. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, basically, yeah. You know, when you get down to right, trying to put enough parking on the property to handle the neighborhood problem, you know, kind of, you know, or whatever. It's a yeah. So it's a, it is a it's a it's your piece of property mm -hmm. to put on it what you mm -hmm. want if mm -hmm. you can, right? Mm -hmm. But. Um, you do have to, from a practical standpoint, you have to address um, who's going to live there if it's a residential mm -hmm. piece. Mm -hmm. And you mm -hmm. don't have existing flexibility, in my opinion, mm -hmm. there's not a lot of flexibility in the surrounding mm -hmm. neighborhood mm -hmm. to, for overflow parking. Mm -hmm. That's just mm -hmm. my impression. Mm -hmm. I would agree with Muriel um, mm -hmm. 100%. Um, I think a smaller project, uh, which would require less parking, would fit mm -hmm. uh, the neighborhood better. Uh, I do think it's important to have uh, affordable living space downtown, which is one of the benefits. I don't think it's going to be a affordable, oh. exactly. Just to be careful of okay. terminology. Sure. It's market rate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, it's something downtown where people can live. But they're small. Yes. Um, right. right. They're not McMansions. Right. Um, and I, I think that I wasn't on the sidewalk, but I did walk through and met with the neighbors. And I'm a little bit concerned about some of the interactions. There's a tree branch. You had a professional go onto your neighbor's property and cut down a, a rather large branch. Uh, any community in the state has laws about that. Um, and I think that was just. That was unfortunate because um, I actually, uh, when I was interviewing two tree tremors to get started, because I had nothing else to do, um, and I, I believe I approached Alice's door and told her, or asked her, um, but I, it's been so long. I, I, I've walked the neighborhood. I, 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 I'm but familiar yes, with the, the neighborhood. I'm familiar with the problems. Familiar with the tree, and the tree in question okay. is not on your property, and you had work done on it. And that, that that's kind of a sticking and, point. And also, that was that tree had not been identified by me to be trimmed, so there was some mistaken communication. You hired someone, and, and they did. I did hire someone. That, that's, and I that's, do have a plan. That's a concern for me. Okay. Uh, is is you should be able to deal with the the neighbors better, especially when when something's on their property, especially when there's mm -hmm. a shared fence. Mm -hmm. uh, that's mm -hmm. their fence on the, on their property that that mm -hmm. should be considered. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to see this project move forward in a, in a way that fits neighborhood better, and I think you can do that. Mm -hmm. I hope you do that. And, and I, I want to say that I did um, both go to the front door for my closest we're, neighbor we, in the we're back. We're not going to talk about the tree. Wanna, so I have tried to be in touch. I think I can sort of piggyback that, but try mm -hmm. to segue a little bit into 
helping you help define that. One of the things on the site visit that um, I and some, some others um, observed was that there wasn't really a clear boundary at this time that, that a site survey um, or what's been done is not an official site survey and that might help you determine where the tr whose property the trees are on. Mine, mine is a survey. I think what Alice was referring to, she had a plot plan done. We talked to the surveyor, Joe Marquette, mm -hmm. and um, so he had a hard time doing my survey and um, identifying, you know, but... Oh, so you did wait, get a but, survey but done. But we're working off the survey that he did for us. And um, I'm not sure that... I, I heard because the lawyer approached my, um, the... Uh, Joe and uh, was Joe's this record showed that a plot plan or something. I, I'm not quite sure of the circumstances. Did, did, was this done after our, our walkthrough, our site, no, no. site visit? No, oh, no. This was oh, before. The question of Joe, we, we went to Joe to ask him. After? After, yes. After. I didn't. The lawyer went to ask the question from him. To Joe. Joe. So Joe, Joe did do a survey for you? Joe is the author of the survey that we're working with, yes. Okay. It took him months to do it. Okay. And um, I had to kind of and, and, sit and then in his doorstep to get it done. <laughs> so and then I would kind of segue a little bit further on, and I'm, I am in agreement that it's an awful lot to fit on that site, but I think yeah. that clarification mm -hmm. as to how the parking flows mm -hmm. by doing some flow study Good idea. might help you figure out some of the ins and outs because it just seemed um, tight. It, yeah, it almost tight. uncomfortably t just to even get out of some of that those farthest mm -hmm. those farthest mm -hmm. parking mm -hmm. spots. Um, and I just thought that it wouldn't help. It, you know that a further study might. Yeah, I know Carl has done those kinds, and she he showed me turning radius, isn't it? And um, see, I have a different idea that, you know, if I had the eight that is required and then had two or three guest parking, that, you know, that I wouldn't, be, satisfy. I wouldn't be spilling over into the street. But other people don't agree with me. So um, okay. that's the okay. problem I'm dealing with. So. Right. I'm good. I just want yeah. to get back on track. Mm -hmm. I agree with what's been said, um, and, and particularly because um, of the neighborhood and the street parking situation. I think this is a unique mm -hmm. situation right. where, you know, the minimum parking requirements for, you know, per bedroom is, is just a minimum, and you really have to think, um, think of it in terms of there's no parking available on streets in that, in that area. Yes, there's so. just... Mm -hmm virtually none you know so that would be just be overflow for if they're having a party you know not for realistic everyday kind of parking so that's probably how you need to approach it mm -hmm. what you can put on that lot that you can actually have adequate parking on the lot that's mm -hmm. the, my opinion okay anybody else <coughs> Yes, I just wanted to say that I was really pleased that you spoke with Mike Ruan, um, and I would love to see something, if possible, that preserves the historic structure, or the shape of it anyway, it, it, if you can, and that I think that would, that's an appropriate, appropriately sized building for the lot, and maybe something could be done with that to make it into, you know, a two-family or three-family or something. I don't know. And, but please, and I hope that you'll be able to talk to the neighbors and see what they want to. I know it is zoned for business, but and mm -hmm. some businesses could be very quiet, and maybe the neighbors would be happy with an office, you know, a small office, but mm -hmm. I don't know. Okay. Well, that's why I was so happy to have this meeting this morning with uh, Michael Rogan, because we did have a lot of interaction and, and a lot of his feedback, and he's, he's volunteered to answer any questions that Carl has as we go forward, and, and so I feel um, I was very much apologized to him because in my forgetfulness. Uh, he was the person I should have gone to much earlier, but I just, the problem was I was overly enthusiastic about the plan, and, and so I was blindsided because I was just starry-eyed about, um, because I just think it was such a perfect position on a busy street to have this building, and um, 
It's definitely it's definitely good feedback to try and work with the neighbors. You know, it's a, mm -hmm. a well established. But, um, you know, when I was call if I call the neighbors and they tell me they aren't comfortable meeting with me, then you. I've done my best. I've gone to the door. I've called. Okay. And it was either sickness or busyness, and then not really comfortable talking with you. Okay. So. Okay. Um, are you planning to withdraw your application? I'm withdrawing. Yes. I'm. So I motion. Would, okay, hold on. So she would request, and you would approve. Yes. Her. So you would request it. So go ahead. Oh, okay. I'm motion. Well, hold on. Oh. Can we get her request first? I thought she was. Okay. I'm requesting that the board uh, I re withdraw my um, all right, uh, my the application. Application. I motion that we allow the application to be withdrawn. Is there a second? Second. Is there any further discussion? Um, if after we vote, can the neighbors speak, or sh if the neighbors want to speak, should they speak now? They can speak now if they want. Yeah, you want. You have to come on up. Come forward. Uh, just reminding people that um, folks at home can't hear you if you speak from the back of the room, so we have to have you up. And introduce yourself, please, and your address. I'm Carol. I live at number three B Street. Yes. Um, so I just, I, what I'd like to say is I think the neighbors as a group would be very open to sitting with you as a group. I'd love that. To talk so about. I have to remind you both that you speak through the chair. I think the neighbors would be open mm -hmm. as a group to sitting with Mrs. Brown to talk about potential for that property. Okay. Um, I, you know, I don't think... After the, the tree incident, I was pretty unwilling to talk with you directly. Mm. But um, I think that um, the neighbors would be open to that. The other thing, I can speak for myself, not for my neighbors. Um, I would welcome even a, a one-level professional building with doctor's office in it or insurance company or something like that. I don't think anybody would have an objection to that. That would be something that usually is open during the day. They would close it five o'clock they would be parking there but even with the tree barrier it would not be intrusive to the neighborhood and given that it's business owned I think it's something that mm -hmm. the neighbors would welcome as well um, so I, I think you know this has been tough for everybody and the neighbors have been very anxious I've been very anxious about what's going to happen there um, we're concerned about our properties but we're not totally um, opposed to something going in there um, I think just think it needs to be discussed amongst all of us as a group and, and not one on one. And I, I also would like to make a comment, and I'll pass it through you, but mm -hmm. in terms of the boundaries, um, there are boundary spikes for where the property line is between uh, Cedar Street property and my property, and those boundary spikes have been there since I moved in and I bought my property 13 years ago. And those are the spikes as well as the. Um, the survey plot plan uh, we used to put that fence up. I mean, it was done in a very meticulous fashion in a way that we believed was on the property line. In fact, we ran that fence. Um, the person that was putting the uh, fence up and mar marking it out said to me, I've got bad news for you. This property line goes through a tree. And so what we had to do is put the fence on one side of the tree and then on the other side of the tree. So a very honest effort was made to identify the property line. And if if there's, and it was based on the plot plan and the spikes. So if there's dispute about that, mm -hmm. then then we can engage in some conversation. Oh, about of it. course, yes, okay. yes. And I think so sometimes the, um, what I've heard is that surveyors' equipment has changed and it's much more, it, so it comes up with different results because the equipment has gotten newer over the years or something. Mm -hmm. so, if it's like, so I think that's why uh, Joe had such a hard time doing it. And, um, you know, he was dealing with... Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yep. Anybody else want to speak? Mm -hmm. All right. So we have a motion and a second uh, to allow the applicant to withdraw the application. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you very much. Thank you. And I wondered if there are written mi minutes of these meetings. There are and, detailed, and lovely 
could unbelievable. I, can, I, can I have a coffee, please? Are these private? <laughs> or even the last time I was here, yeah, no, I would no, I would no, love to have them. copies of those. So because it's hard for me to write and okay. talk and yeah, thank no, you. the minutes are excellent, and you're certainly welcome to them. Okay, thank you. I'm very encouraged that you're working with the neighbors, and neighbors are working with you. That's that's a good that sign. That was always my intent, yeah. and actually, I developed a very good relationship initially with the people excellent. over on B Street. They were very very nice to me and talk to me and look at my plans. So, okay, bye-bye. Good luck. Take care. Thank you. Okay. All right, we have um, a certain amount of uh, time before 925 when we will have another opportunity to continue a public, continued public hearing. Um, zoning bylaws? We have a huge chunk of time, Mary. Are you willing to go through the zoning bylaws? Absolutely. Okay, so uh, the Zoning Advisory Committee has come up with a number of things um, as recommendations to the Planning Board. Um, and um, we all are meeting next Tuesday as well. We're hoping to have one or two additional recommendations <coughs> to come to you. Um, but uh, but the, <coughs> the list that begins on page 9 of the packet, um, so it's the planning board memo, oh, yeah. is a very good summary. Oh, I'm I can go, go back and forth to the, you know, to the actual wording of each one, but <clears throat> this is an excellent summary. Good idea. Um, so that's what I suggest we go through. Okay. All right. Yeah. Point of clarification, please. Special town meeting February 11th is different than the annual town meeting. So what we're talking about now is for the annual town meeting in May. May. Okay. Correct. So and my understanding is that each one of these we need to vote on as to whether or not we will want to send it to town meeting to the warrant right mm -hmm. and then we have to hold a public hearing uh yeah prior to when does the public hearing need to be done before town meeting before town okay so it, it doesn't have to be done by town town meeting? february 5th but we yeah. usually do it february right so okay so okay. the vote the votes need to take place before the february 5th deadline but the public hearing takes place after that right Okay. Yes. To, this is a vote to, to secure a spot on the warrant for each of them. Okay. We can remove them from consideration from the warrant if we so choose. But this we can't put them on um, after February 5th? Yes. Right. So All we right. have to vote to put, the, put them on. Okay, good. So the first recommendation has to do with temporary banners over the streets. This was a request by the Board of Selectmen who I believe got uh, uh, some wording approved several years ago that did not include appropriate dimensions. So we made a few changes. Um, the, um, the banners still need to go through the Board of Selectmen for approval to be put up. Okay, so that it doesn't take away that. And Have so we like been flying can... illegal banners? Is that what we're saying? Is that what we're is that is that what's been happening? <laughs> the family day banner was larger than this. I think, I think right now because it's to restricted to about this thing, you know, <laughs> the room, they have like, to get a special, special permit in addition to the board of selectmen doing something right. in order to hang a normal kind of banner. So, three things we changed. One was the number of days a banner can be displayed. Fourteen days changed it to thirty days. Um, the maximum size was increased to 180 square feet from 75 square feet. And um, the current wording says over Main Street mm -hmm. and did not allow any place else. And we mm -hmm. thought, even though Main Street is the most likely location, there may be situations in which the selectmen would want to approve it over other streets. So. School Row, maybe, right? <laughs> So, and also Main Street is eventually going to be putting all poles underground, so we won't Where have Where will we hang our banners? <laughs> um, so, so those are the three changes that we are proposing. I presume the 180 square feet is some typical size? Yeah. Okay. Can I add, add to this? Because um, EHOP was actually the one that wrote the original sign by law for the temporary banner a few years ago. Um, not the selectman. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... Uh, and we had gotten the size recommendation from the town of Holliston, which had done it for a lot longer. 
I, the family day banner, I believe, was oversized, and I thought it looked okay. So I, I have no objection to changing it to the larger size. The 30 day and and switching it to other public roadways, I think, is also a good idea. Like you said, the the, the poles downtown will be gone. Um, but the 14 to 30 days, I'm not. I'm a little wavering on that because 30 days seems like an awfully long time, especially if they can go in any street. We could have them all over the town for 30 days. Like it, it wouldn't be. Um, automatically for 30 days and Board of Selectmen could still limit it well you know, I'm supportive of the bylaw change in general just I'm hesitant about 30 days so, so I would certainly want to put it on the warrant but I agree I don't want to have any illegal banners flying over Main Street or otherwise <laughs> <coughs> so why did we remove the requirement that it was just Main Street because, because Main Street is not going to have poles. Oh, they have so to be hung by. Well, they'll have poles. light poles that you can have the vertical ones, and those would be more likely to be 70, 75 square feet, square feet. So maybe at that point it would be, we'll change it back, but in this case, you know, it doesn't. Well, it would be a maximum size, right? So you yeah, could have a 75 square right. foot banner so if that's that. what you wanted. Um, and also, I guess the, the discussion was that you might want one. I can see this, there's a lot of excellent publicity that happens up on the, the tennis, tennis courts. courts. Tennis court, yeah. 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 That actually was the one raised is the tennis court location. That there's yeah. And it, everybody drives, you know, everybody drives. Is that 75 square feet? There's, there's right. really high demand for the tennis court banner spot, and it, sometimes you can't get your banner there if, if they don't have room, and they yeah. only let you have it for two weeks. That's but why if somebody could take it up for 30 days. See, someone else. This is not. This is not for. This is not for the tennis court spot. This I know. is for over, the, over street. the street. But it could be over the tennis around. court spot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So it's actually providing more availability. The question, um, yeah. how many places in town actually have poles on both sides? Yeah, we were thinking about that. Not too many, but again, you know, this just gives some flexibility to the Board of Selectmen to uh, allow it elsewhere. This is practice for town meeting. This is a microcosm of what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Except I won't be able to rebut each and every yeah. comment. <laughs> maybe you will. Have your chance. <laughs> Well, would people be, able to, people be able to maybe put a temporary pole or something if they need it? Or? It's not terrible feedback, though, to take back to Zach and just say, you know, wondering about the 30 days, understand the Board of Selectmen will have uh, the decision-making. Just let them know that, that th those are soft questions that came up right sure. away. Sure. I'm a little concerned about the public roadways being too broad, too broad, maybe limited to Hayden Row and, and Main Street, you know, or maybe another road, but I think all public roads kind of... Somebody's going to ask to hang one across Wilson Street. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they just are. <laughs> the way the new wording is, it's really an unlimited... Select it still has to be... But like the uh, Woodville section on Wood Street. Yeah. True. There could be right. an True. opportunity for, yeah. for a banner there for some for, thing. Yeah. And they do have for the local right? neighborhood you know, street activity. lights. That's actually a nice location for one. Yeah. 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 It can make the Horribles Parade much more adventurous, too. <laughs> swing in from them. And oh, there you go. <laughs> but it is, it is certainly possible that um, you would field discussion and amendments on time. We'll have the public hearing, too. So that, that's the next time we'll have an opportunity to kind of so find out how people feel initially. Just a, just a question, uh, I guess, from point of order is if we think as the planning board that 30 days is too long. Um, is that something we should address now or is that something we should address at the, the public hearing or can we address it at either? So to the extent that this becomes your article, you could make any changes that you want at any, at any, time. At any time. Yeah. Okay. So maybe it's good to put it on the warrant like this and with public hearing we could decide to change it if we needed to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I don't necessarily feel like we ha as long as we're sort of generally in, a, in agreement that it's a good article to put up, um, I don't think we have to fine-tune it. I, I'd actually argue against fine-tuning it too much before mm -hmm. that first public hearing. Because, yeah. you know, you have, you have no idea what people, you know, people will come forward with different ideas and yeah. so forth. So we might as well field them all. But Okay. So I am very relieved we're going to be in compliance, though. So do we need to vote on these to go on the warrant individually, or...? I don't think we have to vote on them individually. Okay, so... I mean, if we, you know... Unless anything stands out. Yeah. 
Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Elaine, but I don't think we, yeah. Okay. All right, how about number two? Okay, number two is <laughs> the uh, yeah. commercial solar voltaic screening. Basically, the belief that um, it would be great to be able to um, give a little bit more oomph to the um, bylaw, but recognizing that limiting this is is restricted by a lot you know in in terms of the state review of the laws and so on so the only wording that we suggested to add is the is the wording that i found in a different bylaw <laughs> forming an effective year round screen so just to add that to the um to the to the parts about screening so the whole paragraph would read a visual impact of commercial solar voltaic installation including all accessory structures and appurtenances shall be mitigated all accessory structures and appurtenances shall be architecturally compatible with each other whenever reasonable structures shall be shielded from view by vegetation forming an effective year-round screen and or joined and clustered to avoid adverse visual impacts okay so that is the only change that we felt like would could make it past the the legal issues. I think that's a really um, good idea. And it might give the planning board additional, you know, negotiation possibilities. Um, did you talk about other things in terms of the solar screening or Screen permitting? Screening, no. That was the only change that we taught you, Zach? The only talked about. change that we're suggesting. Okay. Yeah. But, That's um, fine. I was just curious. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, basically, there's a lot in here that talks about screening. And we didn't feel like there was much wording changes that could be made, because there is already a lot in here. Okay. Uh, on this one, not to nitpick, uh, I appreciate you guys put a lot of hours into this, um, but I think we're already covered, because year-round screening, when we're approving projects, we have the the bylaws and the states, the fencing with the slats, mm -hmm. uh, various options, uh, and then if there's planted materials, usually Arbor Vitae, and that's a, a year-round pine kind of tree. So have we ever approved anything that wasn't year-round type of screening? Uh, you know, I, I don't think there is that type of screening that we we've have spoke about in any project. So I'm, I'm thinking this might just be extraneous, but... Um, like personally I've heard from people in town about other solar projects that have been approved and they are visible from the homes nearby um, either seasonally or even year-round and so I don't I don't know you know I have no information about how those went through an approval process or what what was done at that point um, with those or even if it's just a um, uh, an enforcement issue of conditions, but um, but yeah, this this particular phrase was used in several other um, of our zoning bylaws. Yeah, regarding you know the the buffer zones and things like that for various construction. So that's that's the only reason that we thought that this might fly here too. I, I'd speak in favor of it, if, if I may. Um, I, I think it, it's helpful to anybody who's doing solar for them to have this, you know, on the ground running. That, you know, they don't have to guess, guess kind of guess what we're, we're going for, and they can have an immediate solution. So it prevents, I think it sort of, it helps as a guide. Um, but it is in the guide, where the fencing is, is spelled out exactly what we were looking for, and when we're talking about living trees, it's usually Arbor Vitae, um, 99 times out of 100. So um, I'm not sure where we're falling short, why there's a need for this, other than to give us more well, options. Arbor Vitae happened to fail in the winter time, so I think we should probably look at that, you know, unless they're covered. I mean, so so I think what this opens us up to is is different evergreen po evergreen trees possibly than what's been used in the past. I've been and on Concom or Planet Water almost ten years. I've never seen anything feel like that. Okay, okay. Carol, 
Carol. I, <clears throat> I think part of what we were trying to avoid is the bylaw has certain setback requirements and reading the way the visual impact statement was written previously, if you had a site with the setback and the setback was, you know, a wooded area, then that is visually shielded. It's not year-round visually shielded, but it's visually shielded by vegetation. Come November, there are no leaves on that, and it's no longer shielded. We just wanted to make well, it's it also clear. Fencing. Hold on. No it, back and forth, Frank. Sure, okay. Thank you. I don't see where it says you have to have a fence around it. Uh, it's it's in all, the, all of our solar, through the chair, all our solar bylaws mention that there's fencing with screening. Solar panels are, I, I think they do have to be yeah. fenced in. And again, yeah. you said the industrial. The one so, on Hayden Row Street, Hayden Rose behind Street. a the house, reconstructed house, is a chain link fence, no bushes, no nothing, see you straight through, through that backyard into the solar um, array. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what screening there was right. put in there right. for that one because there's, there's no, nothing screened at any point in the year. So, I, you know. And I think, um, so if I can ju jump in here, I actually, first of all, like the um, more explicit language of the effective year-round screen for solar farms. I think one of the natural challenges we face with solar farms is um, the inclination to cut down as much vegetation as possible to get as much um, uh, solar panel exposure mm -hmm. right so we're trying to we're trying to push back a little bit gently against um you know making it like the hayden row one which yeah. i actually i don't know that i've ever even noticed or seen i don't no, you can um, but I, I will drive by um but the um the other reason i'm kind of interested and maybe this is not even not even the i'm kind of interested to hear the discussion on town meeting floor about solar um, solar photovoltaic installations where we have seen such a number of them come forward and how in just how people are feeling about mm -hmm. um, about them you know sort of exploring the, the con conceptually going forward what we might feel like as a town yeah. uh, if we even had any flexibility in there but just to, to at least understand how people are feeling about them as they go in but yeah. also want to say that no property owner um, owes any other property owner invisibility, right? So there's, you know, there's a common sense thing. People are entitled to put um, solar panels in, and they're not necessarily obligated to make it invisible to the passerby. We did also have an interesting conversation, Zach, about um, Wellesley, was it? And they've got mm -hmm, so. overlay districts for this type of installation mm. as opposed to just but the wording is encourage solar in these overlay districts oh. not necessarily they can't disallow it elsewhere that's my understanding right. but they're encouraging it in these particular right. overlay districts <laughs> and i think that we're finding and we're learning more as we go along that the um you know the state has intentionally um established guidelines and uh and regulations to encourage solar, and that's a good thing. We just happen to also love our trees. Okay, I'm, I'm in favor. Is anybody not in favor necessarily? I know, okay. Mm. We do, just procedurally for the board and for the public, we do vote it specifically at, at the um, public hearing. Okay, got it. But All we right. do have to vote to put them on the warrant. We are voting to put them on the warrant, but they could come off the warrant yeah. is, is what I'm saying. So it's not, this not, they can't go back on after tonight. So in order to keep open the possibility of having them on the warrant, we have to vote them tonight. Okay. The rest of the ones we'll discuss tonight um, have to do with changes in the either by right or special permit allowed uses within either industrial a industrial b or the professional office district which is the franklin road is that, right? is that particular mutual. site on franklin road that is currently mutual was there mutual yeah nursery okay so 
So all of the, the next suggestions really have to do with encouraging by, by stating it specifically in a by right or a special permit um, uh, area of the bylaw in order to perhaps expand the way people might think about certain commercial development. Okay. So the first one is educational uses and um, that would that ironically it's it, they don't need to have this in the in the zoning bylaws um, because of the Dover amendment correct me if I'm wrong on any of this Elaine because of the Dover amendment um, it is allowed um, so this use is allowed educational institutions and restrictions and vocational schools things like that um, it's allowed anywhere in business districts or industrial districts or maybe even residential yep. I don't know yeah okay. anywhere so <laughs> so so we really don't need to put it in here um, and but but we thought that I believe some people are thinking that the um, Franklin Road site might be a great use would be a vocational school um, and maybe this will encourage it so that is the reason it's being put in or recommended to be put in all right so I'm not overly enthused by that approach I'll just give you my <laughs> first impression but you know I'm not gonna fall on my sword but if it's already allowed I, it doesn't I don't know I think mm. there's no harm in it, though, because well, it's, it's just a nice, a, quiet uses. It's a, a nice, quiet <laughs> use. <laughs> it's a use we like, so let's... Yeah. I don't know that we encourage um, a particular development type by... Um, we do a this approach I, and and I that, that's not me objecting to that vision for that property it's a nice quiet use why wouldn't I love that <laughs> um, and they like trees I hope um, but I just I, it just seems it seems like a very unique approach like an approach we've never taken uh, in a, any other zoning bylaw that I know of that's all this is where I have to say I wasn't there for that meeting mm -hmm. um, it's it's the industrial zones in in my mind those zones are established for a certain purpose and schools and the things that are are listed here are allowed everywhere and we don't need to specifically point them out we also continuously talk about increasing our commercial base which is what those areas are there for set aside for and these uses if they're not for profit do not generate any real estate income, real estate tax right. income for the town. So to me to use that space and try and encourage that space for this use in all of our industrial areas is counterproductive to what we're trying to accomplish with those districts. So that's just my take on it. I don't believe it should be there as a, as a called out item. But anybody else? I can see both sides. I, if, if it's Mass Bay Community College, uh, yeah, they're, they're not going to be paying taxes. Uh, if it's a private driving school or something, I'm not sure of the rules there. Um, but that Liberty Mutual building would be ideal for uh, uh, some sort of vocational uh, program inside their buildings and rebuildings and they take things apart and they rebuild them and they were testing safety so inside there's a big gymnasium type of space there's little houses that are built and rebuilt constantly or they have been uh, there's a driving track in the back for safety testing there's a bunch of office spaces there um, I've done some projects there it's a great building um, but overall I agree with Carol's assessment that it's maybe um, it may take away from the town too in, in, in regards to taxes um, I would like to see that space in particular be used for the good of the town of the community uh, but and I also agree with Muriel's assessment too so it's well I, I rather fav can I just say this I rather sure. favor leaving it in place until the the um, public hearing just so everybody gets a chance to weigh in on it 
um, mm -hmm. and saving a space for it, but that's just my initial impression that it's, it doesn't really strike me as something I'm going to vote yes on. Can I, can I also just point out that we're talking about Industrial A, Industrial B, right. and Professional Office Park? Yeah. The Franklin Road is the professional office piece. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's so one could piece. You I mean, if, <coughs> if well, people wanted to make a change to this, um, it could be changed to just the P district, so. Right, right. Yeah, it wouldn't I be, think, I wouldn't think be we opposed added, to that. I actually think that was the way it was originally discussed, and then it was like, well, why not, you know, if it's already allowed by the Dover Amendment, well, why don't we just add it all? I mean, you know, so. I think that was, that was where, it, where it went. Amy? So I really appreciate Carol's thoughts. I hadn't thought of it in that mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. Just one counter thought, though, was that bringing people to an area, even if they're going there for school, they'd then purchase things at stores and restaurants in the commercial mm -hmm. and industrial zones. So even though maybe they're not paying as much tax if it's a nonprofit school, they, do they so really they bring some, some, some yeah, commercial benefit? Some benefit, yeah. Potentially. Yeah. Right. And we do already have a preschool in the industrial zone, a church, right? Um, preschool in the industrial zone? Mm -hmm. Well, we do have a, the Playhouse South Preschool. Street. Oh, the West Playhouse Preschool is, South Street, is, is on South Street. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, that's true. Yeah. And the Vineyard Church is on and South Street. they can Street. go, I mean, they, we have one in the, we have one off Wild Road. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, among the palaces. Okay. I remember that one. It's <laughs> sunshine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I guess uh, my whole thing is just initially, it can, it, they can go anywhere. I have no objection to them going anywhere. Yeah but I don't know that we need to make a change to the zoning. I, I hadn't thought of Carol's point either. Um, but my it's only me, and my, my feeling is to leave the suggestion on until, the until we have the public hearing. Sure. Yep. Okay. okay. Recommendation four is indoor recreational uses in industrial A and industrial about B this, actually. districts. This would be um, adding that as a by right use. Um, I know that indoor recreation, at least in, oh, okay, I'm sorry, that, um, Elaine included the definition of indoor recreation mm -hmm. in our memo here on page 10. It's indoor skydiving. Um, so this, this definition is, is in the bylaws. So um, such activities may include swimming, skating, indoor skydiving, soccer, bowling, and other similar uses, but shall not include arcades and billiard halls. <laughs> oh. <laughs> because we know how bad billiard halls are. And less accessory to another indoor recreation. That reminds me of a musical. Yeah, musical. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's where we went to. Okay. Um, never but, so I mean, did we talk about did we talk about changing that? I, I mean, I am not a, a huge fan of arcades and billiard halls. Did we intentionally leave it that way? No, the indoor recreation definition stands in the bylaws right now. Okay. Okay. And we didn't change the definition of it. We just said we should allow it by right in industrial A and industrial B districts only. Okay. Um, and. Again, with some dissent, but nonetheless, it does add to the tax base and the uh, the South Street area is a mixture moment. of different things. It's not it's not manufacturing. Okay, was, this was also voted on the night that I was not there. You just <laughs> missed the wrong meeting. <laughs> not the right one to miss. I I am not ne necessarily opposed to having them in that district. Uh, my issue with it is them being a use by right. I think they should maintain, be a special permit item. Just because I think that's an ever-changing thing, it's not necessarily the best use of that, that zone. And if you make it a use by right, you basically have given up all control over how that site develops. It just needs to meet the zoning requirements of the site. You lose so much control by putting it in as a use by right. And there's um, the, the counter discussion to that, because that was discussed even without me there, <laughs> um, was that the special permit process is um, a disincentive to small business. Um, and, um, you know, perhaps large chains and so on are not necessarily intimidated by a special permit process. But, um, 
And there's also the Zoning Board of Appeals very typically will be, introduces a lot of things to the ZAC that are, we get a lot of these requests and we just approve them, so please, you know, yeah. put things in. Is that one of these? No. Do we have a lot of these? No. That's, no. Is that That's where this came from? Board special permit, right? No, it isn't. This would be um, the only planning board special permit is the marijuana establishments or something. In like these that. in these districts, it's board of appeals. Board of appeals. It's a use, right? It's a use. Okay. Yeah, and and I stand correct. In all likelihood, it's going to be a use, um, a use of an existing space too. I mean, there was. I don't know if it's still there or not, but there was a. Indoor play place. Yeah, there was Playtown the Express first building to the left, you know, on South mm -hmm. Street, mm -hmm. right when you turn. And I took my kids there all the time um, when they were little. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I'm just asking. I, I intuitively love the idea of uh, indoor recreational facilities. My my family had loved them and mm -hmm. and traveled all over to um, go to different ones. Um, how is the tax rate set? It's just on the. The building and the apartments is in the building, right? The commercial property has to be the value, but that's an assessing question. I yeah, I, so I, it, it, yeah, I'm not. Again, I'm not sure that uh, it's definitely a bump over an empty building sitting there, yeah, that's, right? That's the definitely a bump it over that. Business in the and area, it, right? And it may pull people in. It might pull people to get here. Yeah. Um, but they can fit into existing industrial style buildings that are currently sitting empty as an example mm -hmm. um, so I, I actually but I but I, I get the point that it's not necessarily the best use of the space if we had two competitors looking to use the space we would want to choose the one that was going to bring in the most tax dollars maybe but it's interesting anyway I don't oppose it mm -hmm. Okay, any other comments on that one? Mm -mm. Or questions and discussions? Um, recommendation five, accessory retail to a manufacturing use in industrial A and, I, and industrial B districts. This would allow, um, obviously, an accessory retail um, attached to an existing manufacturing, so. Oh, yeah, yeah. Outlet store, whatever they call it, so. And it would be allowed by right but the maximum area was is 5,000 square feet for the retail portion. And what's uh, a, a, and it's not proportional necessarily to the manufa to the manufacturing no, size. That's the thing I would maybe think about. I don't necessarily know that it's a it's a factor, but I might think about that. Just for the record, I like this one. Oh, good. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> yeah, I do too. I think it's a little innovative. It's awesome. Have a Dell EMC shop. Okay, and the next one is restaurant seats. So at the present time in industrial B, this is we're just talking industrial B here. Um, at the present time, they're allowed by right with okay. no more than 100 seats. Just for Mrs. Kramer and potentially some people in the public. Uh, 1B is where? It is on the east side of 495. Lumber Street? Area? Lumber Street. Lumber Street. Lumber and Street Elmwood and Park. the Elmwood, yeah. Elmwood. Okay. And there's a couple of satellite locations. So E.L. Harvey is also an industrial B district. <laughs> and also um, where couple, the... A uh, couple spot zones. Yeah. The Wilson Street solar, uh, <laughs> solar on the Cedar Street side was, is industrial B near the, the snow dump. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's a tiny little <laughs> yeah. drop of zoning <laughs> that happened there. That's interesting. Fascinating. Fascinating. All right. Okay. Oh, so that's not down by E.L. Harvey. <laughs> <laughs> so sure. the proposal is to remove it from a special permit requirement. I think I think there's a typo here in the way it's worded. Yeah. Remove it from the special permit requirement for restaurants with 100 seats or more, not or less. Okay, so time So we want to remove the restriction of the 100 seats. Present time restaurant, but only within the hotel overlay district 
portion of the industrial B. Hotel oh, overlay gosh. district being. That changes the entire meaning. <laughs> <laughs> The hotel so what, what, the what, are we aiming, what are we aiming to do? What are we trying to do? Make it easier. I mean, 100 seats for a restaurant is minuscule. Okay. Well, mean, it, it, give, me a, give me an example. It's going to be 25 tables of four. Right? 25 tables of four. 25 tables of four. So it's like the spoon, maybe. Yeah. Okay. So we want Similar. to make it easier to put in restaurants. But... We kept it within the hotel overlay district of Industrial B so that it wasn't abutting the residential area on Elm Street. Okay. Can I ask why you didn't put it in the rest of the hotel? Some, some of the hotel overlays in Industrial yeah. A, I yeah, think. Yeah, people didn't want it in Industrial A. They didn't want to open it up to Industrial A for some reason. There, there is no restriction on number of seats in Industrial A. So oh, that's oh. it's not necessary. Okay. Not necessary. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. There we go. I think that sounds reasonable. Okay. With so, this, oh, go ahead, Frank. Would this cover Dunkin' Donuts if it didn't exist now, or is that outside of the city? The rural business district, so it's not not affected. Mm. It's not in that little wedge. So yeah, the rural business is like right along Main Street, right? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't affect Starbucks either. No. Is there a limit to the size of a restaurant? No. I mean, no. What was your question? Is there a limit to the size of a restaurant that is allowed? It's the permitting and the number of seats. <coughs> so if it's more than 100 seats right now, it needs a special permit in the industrial B. Carol, how do you feel about this one? I wasn't there. No. <laughs> I think I was all right with that, although I wasn't there. They were very busy that night. Yeah. Did they, they do everything talking. while you weren't there? <laughs> well, I wasn't there talking. We got a lot more done. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's interesting to think about. I would uh, be, uh, yeah, I'm in favor of um, a lovely restaurant or two, for sure. Yeah, if I guess happens. that's the idea is, you know, can we increase the likelihood of there being some more restaurants to put in? Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other comments? If Fran's watching us at home or live or when he watches <laughs> on tape, restaurant row. <laughs> restaurant row. Is that what you want? Is that what you use in the paper? Uh... uh I would generally be in favor, but specifically, I have some concerns. But I'd be willing to uh, see what see what the discussion leads to. Yeah. One thing that that I always have been finding is that the public comes up with things that we never mm -hmm. thought of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so recommendation seven: car wash facilities in industrial A district. So, right now, they are allowed by special permit in the downtown business and business districts only. And um, we, and this is a recommendation to make this um, a buy, a use by special permit. Okay? So, it wouldn't be a buy right. It would be by special permit. And this would be in Industrial A. And we um, included some verbiage that um, that basically s says that it would be using sustainable, efficient resource utilization. You know, that sort of thing. So, and will that stand up? The, that because line? we didn't want to put in specific. You know, because 20 years from now, maybe the technology has changed enough that mm -hmm. somebody was saying waterless car washes <laughs> so we didn't want to say efficient use of recycling of water <laughs> I don't think I want to know what they're gonna wash cars with in that case well if cars will have rockets yeah with different mass car wash facilities I find myself wondering if anybody's gonna be overly enthused but we'll see <laughs> definitely not downtown though that was a, a requested downtown. one yeah from 
Yeah, but but we were talking about how downtown would be the worst. Would be worse. Yeah. Be, but um, because of you know possible queuing and and just we, general uh, lack of attractiveness as well. Could we consider removing them from the downtown at the same time doing this? Well, we talked about that too, but um, well, it was raised that it was requested by a particular gas station owner as possible add-on. In the downtown? Yeah, oh, I think oh. that's how it was originally added to the downtown, is that right? Several years ago. Mm -hmm. And they've never, they've never applied. Had, you know, okay. gone through with it, but they want the right to do that, to improve mm. their property. And it is a special permit, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not a right. special permit. So I don't have any objection to it being a special permit in the industrial A. No, I, I think it's a good idea. I don't thought to contemplate taking it out of the downtown business, though. No. Okay. Well, so there's great. several other things coming up next week that we might be able to come to a conclusion and vote on and get back to you um, for the following week, but. Um, not guaranteed. There's just two, one or two more items that we're going to okay. try to get that far. Okay. All right. So are we in agreement generally as a board that we put them all on the warrant for consideration at the at least at the public hearing? Yes. 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 Okay. Awesome. All right. Thank you, Mary. Do we, do we need a motion or just? I don't think so. Right? We don't. Do we have to vote it? Yes. Oh, I'll entertain a motion to that effect. So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Uh, any more discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Nice job, everybody. Could I ask a related you question can. about the ones coming up for discussion? Um, or, or was it in the packet? Is there a list of what else you're considering? Oh, um, yes. Um, if it's in the packet, I'll one just One has to do with... Um, some, some things that Deb had suggested, and um, she's working on wording possibilities. Um, so, you were, you were working on the signage one, right? Yeah. Okay, so, has to do with signage and um, overhanging things on Main Street. Mm -hmm. Yeah, height, so safety, that. relationships. Okay. okay. Um, the other one we were going to try to address was a new a new recommendation or a new suggestion um, by um, some um, residents of um, new developments who are on private ways and are asking us to review and consider the um, the bylaws related to the um, private payment for the trash pickup, I think it was. Yeah. The garden apartment yep. where you yeah. yep. have private trash. Oh, so just, don't, just for fun, you might have to have the deputy town moderator moderate that discussion. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, All right. So interesting. Can I ask if you're considering, um, or maybe you already decided not to? I think Gary and I had both brought up at the Zach public hearing the industrial, or sorry, inter agricultural districts. There's some large parcels that are currently being used for, they're open, like the YMCA, the labor training, and the golf course. But they could have home, if those businesses no longer exist, they could become homes because homes are allowed by right mm -hmm. and residential. Did you look at the zoning of? We had not. We had. We did not think that we would be able to examine <clears throat> that in depth enough prior to the deadlines for this year. So Is it on the list? Yeah, it's on our list. It's still yeah. on our list for this coming okay. year. Because yeah. I do continually hear from the public, as I think we all do, about the fear of the town growing too fast. And there was just a news article that it, we've grown by twenty percent since twenty ten through twenty seventeen. And people wondering what tools we have to slow growth. And I, I don't know if I really support the tools that we could put in place because they're like snob zoning. But I, I do feel like sometimes we need to have that discussion in front of the public and let them weigh in if they. So Amy, what, how could we possibly resolve that? To so like in the agricultural, we could re increase the minimum lot size. I think right. It's like right now, I think it's an acre and a third, and it could we could increase it to two acres like some towns have done in agricultural mm -hmm. zone. 
those are those all those parcels in agricultural zones? I think so. Yeah. All the big that ones. would affect all agricultural zones. Yeah, right? it would. Yeah. Unless you unless you wrote it to not. <laughs> yeah. Is there, are there any other tools that we can use to limit growth? Well, setback requirements could be increased, I guess. Um, I'm trying to think. Very long discussion. Yes, it would be very long discussion. Some creative things you could think about. But I think the public is hungry for that discussion. As I well, there's mm -hmm. you know there's the temporary moratorium on new developments. So I didn't think that was feasible, but I don't know. Yeah, uh, only for a short period of time, and if you're actively planning something, so you're doing it for a planning purpose. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. not a growth stopping. It's, can't just say no. We have a, <laughs> we have a moratorium on Osmond right now, right? Pardon me? We have a moratorium on Osmond mm -hmm. right now, don't we? No, we don't have any moratorium. Hmm. Well, I thought Ken no. brought That's that. That's garden before. apartments, right? They're, they're, those were taken out of the bylaws, right? It's not, no, it's not a moratorium. It's just that um, the planning board can't issue a special permit unless basically we need the affordable housing. Right. So because it's a 10% right, right, right. 25, 10 affordable housing requirement. Mm -hmm. I had one other thought on agricultural. Um, so the golf course use, for example, just as an example, like for, are there other things that are not currently allowed by right in agricultural that we would like to allow in those big areas that are open that might be more less costly to the town than more homes, but, but still would not be up upsetting to the neighbors? I, don't know. <laughs> I, I know, that's a thing, but there's not there's too much demand for agriculture. <laughs> So anymore. Uh, the other thing um, is, as we contemplate those parcels, I don't necessarily disagree that the public is hungry for it or whatever, but I'm going to be very careful. I think that we're not um, imposing regulations on you know three individual landowners. Right. right. That's why I was suggesting all of agricultural because mm -hmm. those tend to be where the the big unused parcels are. And then I I just um, I guess I I would rather. Find a way that's more um, proactive than restrictive, necessarily. Like, what do we want in, in, in the fu for the future um, on a parcel like that? If we wanted something, how do we incentivize something mm -hmm. that? How do we incentivize agriculture? <laughs> mm -hmm. Or uh, how do we incentivize what we want to to preserve it? What what's there? And I know that you know are all the, all those properties are I think are under Chapter sixty one A protections. So that the town would have a right of first, first refusal. refusal. Okay. So one thing we can do in the near term is, you know, is uh, is research and prepare, and perhaps start to save money or build a fund in case they to be prepared to exercise those rights if the town so chose. Mm -hmm. So if that has to wait for, because Zach's going to be around now, so that's yep. a good thing. It could be discussed later yep. after town meeting. I don't disagree though that that um, people are really interested in in that discussion but it's a it's a it's a complicated it's discussion. Right. it's extremely complicated and hopefully the Y and the golf course and what was the other one laborers mm -hmm. laborers aren't going anywhere anytime soon the reason, well, the what? reason I brought it up is in my sister's town in Texas they have a big golf course but they found out that golf is a declining sport just across the country, not, and mm -hmm. they're very worried about what that parcel is going to become in her little town of Texas, which maybe got me thinking yeah. sold about for ours. Them. Right, it's probably going to be sold for them. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's already clear. It's already clear. It's true. It's going down there. So we just tell them to plant more trees uh -huh. after the ones they cut down on Fruit Street, and I'm not quite over it, but, you know, I'm seeing my therapist. All right. Um, how about this point of discussion? Um, oh, oh, first of all, can we uh, probably quickly um, discuss and vote the draft planning board 2018 annual report? I yeah, I have um, some questions. Again, I need to look for it. Where is it? I'm so glad somebody else has to look for things. So what page? 45. Through the chair, last. should we be opening the 925? Oh, yeah. Third to last. No, oh. Opening and continuing? Or? Yes, thank you very much, actually. I had sort of taken it right off of my head. Points. Yes. <laughs> um, I will entertain, when is that going? To, when they, they, when are we suggesting they go to? It's also oh, the 25th. There we go. And then at 8 o'clock, and extend the uh, deadline to March 11th. Only giving it a half an hour, though. That that 
because we set the other one at 830. Is that enough time for whisper what? Well, it's okay. going to have to be. Okay. Whisper. What's on earlier than that? What's on at 730? Um, we thought we'd do the um, public hearing. Oh, wait a minute. Public hearing for zoning amendments. No, I take this back. Okay. 730 to 830. 830 we have mass Woods, mass and we probably want zoning amendments for 730 for an hour. Is that what it is on? The, the, uh, we usually do it on February 25. Yeah, be good. So or we could do it in March. But March, okay. So that depends. Yeah. But, but tentatively we thought it might be February 25th. Okay. Um, okay. Well, so I'm thinking nine o'clock for um, yeah <laughs> yeah nine right so we leave the zoning leave for, the spot uh, for the zoning for whisper way nine o'clock okay okay all right so I will um, entertain a motion to open the continued public hearing for whisper way OSLPD definitive subdivision plan um, and continue it to February 25th at nine o'clock and also extend the decision deadline to March 11th. So you said till the 25th of February? February 25th at 9 o'clock. And, and we continue Mass Pinock Woods to 8.30. Yep. So that only leaves them a half an hour. Yep. Okay. And extend the deadline to the decision deadline to 3.11. Somebody like to make so a motion. motion? Thank you. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Thank you, Dave, by the way. Just before you leave um, yeah. for Mass Pinock Woods, um, they also need an extension of time. Is that also to March 11th? March 11th. To March 11th. <laughs> okay. So I'll entertain a motion to extend the decision deadline for Mass Pinock Woods to March 11th as well. Motion. So, yeah. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Nay. Any abstentions? Okay. Did you say that? Yep. Frank said nay. He's an, he's an opposer. Okay, <laughs> thank you. All right, so the uh, Planning Board 2018 Annual Report. Okay, uh, my, my question had to do with um, um, whether or not the, the list of things is things that were discussed during 2018 or the final decisions or permits or so on were made in 2018 the decisions the decisions okay so and the first major projects approved mass Pinock woods isn't that on our that agenda was a, that was a previous change. it was previously approved yeah and then in 2018 and now it's coming back that to was, us that that's a different a thing on that Even on that property. property yep okay, yep um stormwater permits Issue, maybe we can say. Mm -hmm. Issue. So, we approved the stormwater permit for the solar facility that we didn't approve. We approved the stormwater, but oh. not the special permit. Just check, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that was the only the only ones that I was like, yeah, awesome. questioning. Okay. Anybody else? And it might it might be good to say on the the the. Um, the last sentence of the opening paragraph that specifically that these are during the calendar year of 2018 these were you know approved or permitted or whatever yeah. just to clarify we don't necessarily oh we, okay we do never mind yeah, I think that would be helpful for the public if yeah. they either said issued yeah. or approved. Yeah. Just, it, it, it is an interesting way that it lands into the into the <coughs> annual report. Yeah. Right. Just, yeah. And in 2019, we're talking about 2018's town meeting with some of these things in the past, but this is what we worked on. Right. It's actually, we'll be finished. Yeah. Just list the ones that Sponsored were adopted. Yeah. Several. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. Looks good. Do we need to vote that? Yes. I will entertain a motion to approve the Planning Board Annual Report 2018 as amended. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? 
Thank you, Kobe. Um, meeting schedule. Our meeting previously set for February 11th um, needs to be canceled or rescheduled. I don't know if there's a rescheduled spot for it. I don't think so, because there's a special town meeting, I should say. A little plug oh. for special town meeting, February 11th. And there's oh. February vacation. And there's February school vacation. Oh. I don't ever do anything fun, but some people do. So, <laughs> Plus, that would mean three meetings in February. Oh, Kobe says no. <laughs> Kobe says cancel it. Do we have anything on the schedule for that night? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Decisions do. How could special that be? town meeting. How could that be three meetings in February? It'll be a special town meeting because that's oh, mandatory okay. for okay. us. Yep. And then what, if do, we do we know the topic of that? What is it? Yeah, it's a tip, tip for a uh, financing agreement. Oh, okay. For a new company for? on South Street. Like in what is it like in biotech or like in bioscience. Bioscience. Bio okay. And anything else that pops onto the board <laughs> between now and then. Mm -hmm. So point of, um, well, I guess context for that is it could be two nights, could be three nights, but probably it'll just be one night. Right. You know what? It's going to be one night. <laughs> <laughs> this is what, this is what I'm projecting <laughs> forward. It's going to be one night. We don't have anything to add to the craziness, right? The planning board's going to stay out of the fray. Um, okay. Um, so I, I would recommend canceling the February 11th meeting, but... Um, open to cancel. Anybody else? I, Dave I, and I are not coming. <laughs> <laughs> I think it'd be great. Uh, we're be, we're going to be busy that week. Um, if we don't have anything on the schedule now, it's, it's I, think it's a, I think it's just a practical, yeah. practical consideration. Okay, so we will cancel it. I think we voted the meeting schedule previously, didn't we? This would be a change. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All righty. Perfect. Do we have to vote it? No, we don't have to vote it. <laughs> Just not meeting. But editing this entry to um, Well, technically, are we meeting? We're, we are meeting, actually. It probably will be posted for us, too, I imagine. Aren't, aren't town meetings usually? There's nothing on the warrant that for us. We could do that. Well, we'll see what happens. Yeah, but we, it, it, we are by charter. Um, requested, required to attend. What, what's the date of that special town meeting? February 11th. Oh, which tell me last year I don't think all the same board members were there. What? Well, I was there. I'm I was there. But <laughs> <laughs> and John was right. ill, so we're going to give him oh, a right. pass. Sure. So, okay. um, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is required by charter. I think it was. It was. I've got I something on yeah. this. I just it all elected officials okay. or board, all board members. Any board? Fine. Like yeah. even just tiny little boards that barely meet? Okay. Is that true with the ATM too? Yes. Mm. So I always That's go every night, so I'm, so I'm all <laughs> here, but Just to be clear, I can see that everyone else does not go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't think that everybody complies with that directive yes, I think in the charter, true. but I do think the charter says that. So you yeah. run a tight ship in the planning board. Yeah. yeah. So and hey, you guys better show up. I'm sorry, let me be explicit. This planning board better show up. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you have a really good excuse, you know. Um, so, how, oh, I should say... We all heard, but the public didn't necessarily hear, um, although maybe there's an article in the paper, I have no idea, um, that Georgia Wilson, our principal planner, has left to pursue um, a master's degree, which we celebrate and uh, applaud her ambitions for, and we wish her well, and we know she'll do very well in the future, and she was um, really a wonderful asset for us while she was here. But alas, she is no longer here. <laughs> So what is the process, Elaine, and what, you know, we should probably just talk about the, the vacancy and what that means. So the position is posted, and I believe the deadline for submitting applications is uh, the end of January, some 23rd maybe. Um, and so at that point, um, we start a review and an interview process, and as before, it uh, would be great to have participation by one or more, but not a quorum, of the planning board. And you're anxious to fill that position so you can have your Monday nights back? I am. Yeah. <laughs> For a lot of I, I do enjoy being here, but... <laughs> <laughs> Not that I don't love being here. Right. But I also like being home. Yeah. <laughs> so um, is, uh, so I'm, ha I'm certainly happy to support that interview process. Um, I can just tell you um, 
that it is better for me if it's possible that we schedule interviews in the first part of the day because I work nights overnights now um, oh, not usually overnights but um, it does any is anybody else interested I'm interested and I'm available during the days yeah. so typically I'm interested as well okay. and I just want to just take this minute to say that I really appreciate the people that you've hired in the past um, you know I don't know the reasons and then you you know what, what, what goes on, but from the value that they brought to the board, I thought they were to be commended, both of them. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But, uh, typically, there's a two interview process. There's an initial kind of screening interview, quick interview. So usually, we brought the planning board in for the in-depth interviews, the second yeah. round, those mm -hmm. candidates. Well, it's for me. Yeah, I would like to help if uh, that's not too many. Well, that's up to four. So. It's, difficult. Um, it's difficult for me to do daytime, so I'm happy with other people. Are available, yeah. Um, and just maybe um, uh, extend it to Gary and Fran. Fran, Fran might both. Be, yeah. As long as it's not a quorum, right? So then, uh, so then we, we would do also need have to staff present as well. So. Right, we'd need to sort of pair it right down if, mm -hmm. if that happened. But I just don't want that to could be a little intimidating. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to be yeah. I'm not. I'm yeah. Not right, 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 if they can handle it in the interview, no, they won't really be able good. to handle it in live that's on really TV. That's really good feedback. Um, just uh, ask them what their interest is, and then, you know, I don't, I, as busy as I am, I don't think I have to follow my sword and necessarily be there. I just want to support it if I'm needed. So okay. let's see if they're interested and have some sort of enthusiasm for it, and then we'll go from there. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. And actually, just because it's a quorum situation now, just we'll work that out, and then we'll come up with a process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is everybody comfortable with it? That okay. Uh, don't look now, but uh, we could leave early, probably. For good behavior. Do it. Huh? For good behavior. Mm -hmm. For good behavior, except for Mr. Except for you. <laughs> except for the guy on the end. Um, does anybody have any reports, future agenda items, anything like that that they're desperate to talk about? Would anybody like to make a motion to adjourn? Oh, oh, wait. oh, wait. I have one more thing. Yeah, one thing. Yep. The, we got a correspondence from Leonard Street, Box Mill. We did? Road. I just noticed it at the very end. Oh. Buckland? Not Box Mill. Buckland? I think did I stop reading? Is it the same All person that does Buckland? Yes. Okay. So did did I stop that? reading? So I did forward that to uh, Mr. Barberi, oh. who's building Box Mill Road. And it also coincided with his application to the board or request to the board for additional lots on Box Mill. And I suggested that he may want to resolve this issue before he proceeds with that. Which that was the one to the left, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The one okay. to the left of what? So the letter. Going in letter Leonard Street. From, okay. From Buckland is the area on the right. Is it? I what, what's down the there? letter you're looking yes. at? The Leonard Street. 90, yeah. Drainage catch basin? It's not. So the person so. writing the letter from the Wall Street Development Corporation is saying that water runoff from Box Mill subdivision is running onto Leonard Street, which in turn, I guess, runs into where, what would be the Buckland Street mm -hmm. property. So this is complicated, but... Um, yeah, because it so, was so easy before. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to come back always before us. It's been an issue. Water has always Very come wet. this okay. way. Um, but I did suggest that he should address that, look into it before perhaps requesting additional lots. Okay. What and so Buckland Street will be coming before us again soon anyway. Does that affect Mr. Terry? Does it come down? That it Mr. Terry's it will on the bottom of it all. <laughs> He's okay. below it all. So I just wanted to make sure we saw, all saw that because it'll come up at the... Um, well, well, is that honest. originally Terry property that is the box mill? No. I don't no. think so. No. No. You know, it's further back. Yeah. Okay. While we're on this subject, just briefly, um, me and um, Jim Soriano were asked to look at the situation, and there is water runoff, there's water barriers, and it's, it's construction's kind of changed the way the water's flowing from Box Mill Road, and it's very complex. I have no idea. We need the scientists from the Conservation Commission to look into it, or a beta, someone to look into it and give us an engineering viewpoint of what it is. But right now, the road's iced up and uh, in front of Mr. McBride's house, and it's it's not going to get any better through the winter. It's just going to get worse. And uh, the more snow we get, the more water it's going to be. And we're going to get a lot of snow apparently next weekend. Are there um, catch basins on that road and not piping underneath? Or? There, there's a, a 
pipe that goes under the street right around there and that's kind of broken but it works but it looks like it's kind of 30 40 years ago it was put together and maybe it hasn't been maintained since we don't know if that's a dpw thing or like it's a culvert that goes across the road the culvert, under, yeah. the, under the road across and I, I took some photos i can send them to you elaine um but it, it's a it's a, it's beyond our it, it needs the scientists to look at it and take measurements and um you know th i'm very concerned about wet basements that are already wet pretty wet now they're getting much more wet and i don't know how i don't know how to measure that so well, fundamentally, the box mill development has to maintain their stormwater on their site, right? That's right. Well, okay. For the most, I mean, water, they can let the water come that always came. Yep. But the question is, how much is that? Where does it go? Does it yep. go in the same place? So it requires someone to take a look at it. Okay. Evaluate it. All right. And who does that? Uh, I think we've asked that his engineer do it, and then ours will review it. Okay. Perfect. Um, just for fun, the last page, I did stop reading when I got to the Board of Appeals hearing notice. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> God. Um, the growing locally thing might be an interesting um, uh, event for people who are interested in um, that very discussion about large tracts of land and housing versus other kinds of growth and mm -hmm. development. I'm going to try to go to it. Yeah. When is it? Oh, February 13th. February 13th. 3 to 5. 3 to 5 p.m., yeah. Is that um, February break? Oh. No. no, that's before break, isn't it? Hmm? Is that bo that's before, before break. break. Yep. Yeah. February break. Well, I might like to go, too, to be honest oh, with you. I'd call for the very people. Um, yeah. 92. Um, does it, do you want to, um, is there any cost? No, no it's, free. it's free, but you have to register. Yeah. Do you want to just register for, who's interested in potentially going? I'll go. Oh, my God. Me too. Right. Okay. Does it, Mary? Do you I'll, mind registering I'll, all of us? I'll, um, I will register all of us if they allow me to. Okay. And then let us know if they so, don't. So it was, and then Carol, and it was. Yeah. I have some piece of mail here too. That's correspondence. Can Amy. From MAPC, it's a little calendar. It's a little calendar. Yeah. Would anybody yeah. like the MAPC calendar? It's nifty. Some so statistics, some graphs. Oh, she's good, Jaren. Oh, uh, hold on. <laughs> um, okay. Did you want to announce the board of appeals um, letters that were in here? No. No. Okay. No. Is there an interest in Okay. Yes, Dave. You. You're up. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Hey, look at that. Quarter to ten. Wow. Amy, did you say you wanted to attend that as well? Uh, no, because, yeah, it's 3 to 5, so it's probably not possible. Right. Um, we're done. If no